WrestleMania 36 is in the books. It is Sunday night, April 5th, 2020. This is the Don, Tony, and Kevin Castle show. I am Don, Tony, as always, and I'm joined along with tonight. Kev Castle, a very different, <laughs> different, different type of uh, yeah. WrestleMania recap, TT. Very yeah, um, I want to shout out everybody who is tuning in. Uh, live and on the recap uh we did not do one last night for a couple of reasons number one every like fifty five thousand podcasters out there were all basically like i can't wait till tomorrow let's all do a show tonight 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 and i get it because i know a lot of people wanted to talk right after what went down last night with undertaker and aj styles but we felt you know what let's give you an entire WrestleMania recap. And the funny thing about it is for a lot of other shows out there that decided to do two recaps for two nights, you add up their shows, their recaps might be longer than what we yeah. saw on TV. But, uh, you know, a couple of surprises. Um, we had some uh, very good creativity. I think that's probably the way to put it. But, Kev, before I ask you your overall thoughts of both nights of WrestleMania, um, mm -hmm. I, I know we didn't talk beforehand, but I'm just going to throw three WrestleManias out to you that okay. we all know. You know, I'm not going to say, give me your favorites from WrestleMania 19. But if I said to you right now, WrestleMania 3, how many matches from WrestleMania 3 that you really look back on and you think about and you're like, man... I, I wish I could go back and watch those matches right now. Like, what matches come to you right away from WrestleMania 3? Uh, Steamboat and Savage. Okay. Hogan and Andre. Okay. And, of course, Billy Jack and Hercules. And okay. <laughs> so, it's three. <laughs> no, I, lo I love Billy Jack, but I'm just saying. No, but, yeah, those are the ones that I, I think about. Savage, Steamboat, and, and uh, Hogan, Andre right off the bat. Right. Now, let's say WrestleMania 5. What matches awesome. come to mind for you? Uh, that would be, what was that? Hogan Savage? Hogan Savage. The mega Hogan powers Sav explode. Oh, so, yeah, the, the Trump Tower, right? Uh, yeah. Trump uh, Casino. Uh, Hogan Savage. And quite honestly, I can't really think of any two that really stick out you, other than Hogan you, Savage. You took the words right out of my mouth. My point oh, is, nice. and when we get, now how we're doing the format for everybody tonight is, we're going to just give our overall thoughts both nights combined. When we get into match by match, we're going to cover night two first, since you all probably heard about 35 different podcasts talking about night one already. So we're going to do night two first and then night one. But I will say this, and I have a little audio clip to share with everybody later when we really get into the meat and potatoes with Undertaker AJ Styles. But you look at WrestleManias over the years. And look, and let's be honest as well. You go back to the early days of WrestleMania. You only had eight matches, 10, seven. You didn't have 16. So you, you understand why you would only think back and maybe one or two matches come to mind when you look back at old school WrestleMania. You want to go Attitude Era, you probably have two or three matches on each WrestleMania that you look back on. You're like, man, those three, I just could watch over and over again. Again. and you look at these two nights combined 16 matches which is pretty close to what it was last year if you got four or five really good matches out of this mania i think we got our money's worth because four or five really solid matches is pretty much what you get out of a wrestlemania you you agree or you disagree no, I agree. I think that that's the thing. And I, I tweeted something today about what you said, like, you know, just let's let this happen because there could be some good stuff. There's always going to be some bad stuff. And that's exactly how I feel about this WrestleMania. I feel that there were the obvious highlights. And I think most of them are obvious to, to most of us will agree. Uh, there was some crap. There was some decent stuff. But that's, isn't that every WrestleMania DT? Has there ever been a WrestleMania with top to bottom, including the prestigious WrestleMania 1, by the way? There was some shit on that show. Absolutely. I remember. And I thought so when I was 15, by the way. Um, so there, there hasn't been a WrestleMania where every match kicked ass. I, I don't recall that. Not in my lifetime. And if there is, please let me rem yeah. let me know. I don't remember that. I agree. I know. You know, look, it, it's not, it wasn't the same without a crowd. 
if you were to tell me, now look, um, I'll play three minutes of what we talked about last week that, you know, you, you saw me t- post it on Twitter early. I'll play that later when we talk a- Undertaker AJ, J, but, right. you know, if I'm really going to find something out of this WrestleMania that I really enjoyed, there was two things especially. Number one, the creativity. You know, you look at some of the matches, they were very creative in what they did. The second thing is, and I don't know if anybody really paid attention to it. um, Sure, all of the grunts and groans during the matches, you heard because there's no crowd really, you know, blocking it out. But one thing that I really enjoyed, and we've talked about this over the years, there are some people who have matches and they're fucking mutes. You hit them, you put them in a submission move, and they're just laying there and you don't hear nothing. They're like this. They just, they they don't say a word. Now, because they're in an empty arena, every single son of a bitch had to really express themselves. Naomi might have been the most silent one today when Sasha Banks put her in a finisher. Naomi's not saying a peep because she doesn't make a lot of noise during a match when there's live crowds. I'm not singling her out, but what I'm saying is, is that Charlotte taunting Rhea Ripley, you know, having Randy Orton taunt Edge and a lot of the verbal stuff you don't normally hear when there's a live crowd. You don't have the mics right in in the wrestlers' faces. You didn't hear really any wrestlers, you know, you know, going over a match as sometimes, you know, Wrestle Crap will point out or Botchamania. But I the extra verbal, you know, berating of your opponent is a little bit if if anybody's ever been a fan of apartment wrestling you know that's pretty much what you would expect go back to teddy terry funk versus jerry lawler the infamous empty arena match from whatever year it was 81 i don't remember the year but uh uh, yeah my eye my eye yeah yeah, yeah, i mean you know that that's a nice little element now i would rather have crowds than having that you know that real you know live emotion but it really forced the wrestlers to really get a lot more animated than they used to and this might be something that'll carry on in the future because you have a live crowd going bananas there's no reason for you to yell at the top of your lungs and you know some of the things that you do so if there was anything i could really you know like try to grasp on this two-night event the creativity and the extra verbiage that we got to experience. I agree. I think the, you know, I was joking about all the yelling with, uh, and we'll do a, you know, a breakdown of the matches. Um, uh, Rhea and Charlotte were really so verbal, but you're right now with no crowd, they probably like that with the crowd, but you don't hear it because of the, the crowd noise. Uh, so yeah, people had to be verbal tonight. You're right. Naomi is one that stuck out to me who was pretty silent. I found that a little awkward, but everybody else had, so, and Tamina was a little silent, but everybody else had their oohs and ahs and talking and talking trash, uh, which was kind of cool. It's something that you don't see before. So I agree with you, the creativity, and we'll go over what was really creative. And uh, the verbiage was good. I thought it, w- it was something different. So, uh, again, like, you know, I, I don't know. You might be, I might be surprised what you say overall about WrestleMania. You might be surprised about what I say, but yeah. let's do it. By the way, I know a lot of you out there were expecting me to wear some really 80s sweatsuit stuff. The problem is it's like 100 degrees in here. And I decided to at least wear, you know, something WrestleMania related. I'm wearing a Morton Downey Jr. shirt because, remember, I think that was WrestleMania 5. You know, give me some of that smoke, Mr. Downey. Do you remember the whole segment where uh, Roddy oh, yeah, Piper yeah, yeah, yeah. don't with blow the, smoke uh, with the, in uh, my face? Was that, 89, that was 89 and Trump... Uh, I think it was WrestleMania 5. You know why? Because I always remember Run DMC did the WrestleMania rap. The same yes. WrestleMania. I think I'm pretty sure that was 5. Okay. I think it was 5. But um, yeah, it was 5. It was 5. 1989. You know, give me that smoke, Mr. Downey. I love... Lo- I, I was a huge fan of Morton Downey Jr., so that's why I'm wearing the shirt tonight. Pay a little tribute to Mort. But uh, let me ask you this. The two nights combined, I think I know one of the answers, but favorite match, least favorite match. 
Uh, obviously, The Undertaker, AJ, which we, we can get into more in a little bit. Uh, fantastic. From whoever produced it, whoever did it, from the atmosphere to the music, the beginning to the end. Uh, I couldn't find a flaw with it if I wanted to. And even if I wanted to, it's, it's ridiculous because I j- just enjoy it. Uh, worst was Goldberg and Braun Strowman. I, I just, uh, you know, just that, that was just trash. And there was no build up to it at all. They. You know, the way they handled Roman bowing out last minute, Michael Cole. Oh, and by the way, uh, the night before, Braun Strowman's taking his place. Yeah. I didn't like the way that, I didn't like the way they handled it. And, uh, boy, it's, it's interesting. Braun gets into trouble on social media with the independent wrestlers. gets a dressing down from his – and gets the world title for it. So it's, it's, it's weird that they went with Braun Strowman, especially on a, a major show like uh, on SmackDown with Fox. And he's the – I get it. It's temporary DT. I get it. It's, he's probably a transitional guy. We don't even know when they're going to start. This coronavirus thing is out of control. Uh, we don't even know when they're going back to live crowds. So Braun having the belt right now is not that bad a thing. But uh, I was surprised that he maybe go with somebody else. So maybe even go with Daniel Bryan or something like that for a last-minute title change. But Braun got the nod, and I thought it was just garbage. But what, what should I have expected? Him? Yeah, believe it or not. Um, I know this is going to surprise a lot of people, um, and maybe because night two are just ended, but I tell you, um, and when we get to the night one, you know, I mean, I'll reiterate what I said last week, the week before, um, you know, I, I said for a while now that they can really do some real big editing when it comes to um bray wyatt and cena but especially aj styles and the undertaker and the one thing i said um was that wwe is going to make the undertaker look like a trillion dollars um now as far as my predictions go i actually got every match correct tonight um i wanted mcintyre to win but i actually would have rathered him win by dq because um I would have loved to have him soak in the crowd cheers with the victory. He could have won tonight by DQ just to postpone it. Um, But my favorite, I don't even know if you could call it a match. And I'll explain further when we get to it. But I got to tell you, man, I enjoyed Bray Wyatt and John Cena more than I did Undertaker AJ Styles. Really? Yeah, Yeah. I mean, going into tonight, Undertaker AJ was my favorite. Um, but okay. when we get into the match a little further later with Cena, Bray Wyatt, I'll explain why I actually enjoyed that more. Least favorite match, I agree with you. Goldberg and Braun Strowman. Um, Friday when I did my predictions, I said that Braun is going to win Roman's belt. This was reward for Braun Strowman showing up. This is reward for Braun Strowman doing the shit that he did on the internet. Um, And not only that, and I pointed this out on Friday, for anybody out there, even though WWE would never admit it, but if anybody out there thinks that WWE is not happy, uh, or let let me rephrase that. If anybody out there believes that WWE is totally fine with Roman pulling out, just see how they treated Friday when they announced Braun Strowman instead. They did not give any explanation as far as why Roman Reigns pulled out. That video that we covered on last Monday's DTKC show, that would have been a perfect clip to play on SmackDown because, and I brought this up Friday, number one, it would have explained why he's not on the match. Number two, WWE is afraid of the fucking virus. They can't even mention it by name. I mean, when we used to get upset at Democrats because they couldn't um, say, you know, know, Islamic terrorism by name, WWE can't even say the word coronavirus. You know, so they could have actually had a public service announcement with what Braun Strowman said. They didn't air it, and they just, matter of fact, put Braun Strowman in it. And the, the Goldberg experiment was a failure wwe's fault you know a little bit of their decision to put it on him you know i think you said it a while back that this was almost you know before the crowds were pulled you know this was probably the best guarantee to get the fans to cheer roman reigns because they were so pissed off at goldberg for beating the fiend so you know it's so i just 
Braun Strowman being the champion now, I'm just not into it. But, you know, he's showing up for work. And if they're going to fill the next two weeks with cacas or just filler stuff, he's going to be there and Goldberg's not. And, um, you know, I think maybe Bray Wyatt is the next opponent for Braun Strowman. I think that was in the cards, whether it was Roman Reigns or Braun now as champion. If Bray Wyatt is Braun Strowman's first opponent, you could see clear as day that WWE decided to take Roman's push, you know, and give it to Braun Strowman. Yeah, and, and also, and listen, I don't mind that kind of feud because they have the history. They can go back. He brought him in. He was a Wyatt family member. Uh, so I, I don't mind that feud. Actually, if it's it goes that way, that's cool. And if they had that point of direction of why they put the belt on Braun and they can do a circle around and have the Fiend come back and, and get the belt back or at least feud for it with Braun, I'm, I'm all right with that. Mm -hmm. I'm all right to that. I'm all right with that means to an end. Yeah. Uh, by the way, for everybody who is on YouTube live, if you uh, enjoy the recap, hit the like button because that allows the show to get a little more exposure and recommendations for others. But I guess we could get right into it because we got 18 fucking matches to talk about. You know, uh, I'd love to get this done by 1215, you know, two hour recap. I think that is more sure. than enough. But mm -hmm. uh, the first, and again, for people tuning in, we're going to cover night two first and then go back to night one since a lot of you out there have already heard a thousand recaps about night one but opening dark match tonight was in fact uh Liv morgan getting the win over natty uh yeah i mean uh natty did the job um you know live i still think they should have let live look good i mean she's an attractive woman but i wish they let her be with the with the, the the blue tongue and stuff like that and the punkish kind of thing, I, I don't know. They, they had to, to to prissy her up. I liked her better when she was more of an individual. Um, you know, Natty is 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 winding down. I think in her career, Natty's got female agent written all over. Her. It's not a bad thing. Natty had a good run, uh, but nothing to really write home about. Obviously, and with no crowd there, DT, it didn't make it much mm -hmm. better. Yeah, look, uh, I like Liv Morgan. Um, you know this whole transformation thing and it was funny because back then we were talking about we hope this doesn't turn into an emma thing when they hyped up emma for so long and then finally when she made her re-debut you know it's like okay that whole thing is done you know the difference is obviously emma you know they were taking back and taking her off tv she made a couple of appearances and then left after the two matches, if I remember, with Oscar. But the thing yeah. is, with um, Liv Morgan, it's like, what is different about her now? You know what I mean? Like, the only thing that was really different was that she apparently had some type of a fling with Lana once. I mean, that's it. <laughs> yeah. And her tie is a little different. She's yeah, like no black. blue tongue. I mean, it's, I don't know why. I. It's pretty obvious they had something else lined up for Liv Morgan and decided almost last minute to squash it. I don't even think Liv Morgan originally was supposed to be in the Lana storyline with Lashley and Rusev. I just think something happened because the way they were doing those segments in the the the. the bathroom and the bathtub and you know teasing that she's going to cut her hair and all this stuff and there was nothing there was nothing so i i think they they changed i mean her outfit's a little bit different but they should have just left it the way she was but uh you know it was what it was but uh opening match tonight we had uh charlotte winning the nxt women's championship <clears throat> defeating rhea ripley yeah, I thought it was. I thought it was a good match. They match up well. These two. Um, I don't get where Rhea's always talking about. They always say I was just like Charlotte Flair. She doesn't remind me of her at all. I don't know where they get that from. But a uh, lot of lot of screaming and yelling. A lot of animation between the two girls. Uh, you know, oohs and ahs throughout the whole match. The loudest verbiage I've heard from anybody. <laughs> um, but it was a it was a good match though. I mean, I thought it was okay. And listen, everyone's hating Charlotte. Oh, you know, gets everything. She's the chosen one. Charlotte Flair is good. Me and you have talked about this, DT. Say what you want. And me and you are in total agreement on this. Charlotte is one of the best. I don't care what you want to say. It's not, it's nothing to do with Ric Flair's daughter. She's fucking good. NXT, it defeats the whole purpose of NXT. Maybe not. Maybe there, there's, again, maybe there's a greater good in all this. But Charlotte is not an undeserving 
give her everything. You know, you know, she doesn't deserve it. Doesn't have the talent. She does have the talent. She's one of the best in the business. I know she's she's she gets a little bit too much, but she's good. Let's at least admit that. Rhea is a young twenty four year old up and coming. She's got a whole career ahead of her. She'll be fine. So I mean, there's not. I don't think Rhea gets you know, buried because she lost to Charlotte Flair. Losing to Charlotte Flair would be like losing her a dad in her prime, and there's primes to somebody. You can get over by losing sometimes. Rhea did not get buried tonight, and maybe there is some sort of thing that is going to happen with Charlotte going down to Maybe she'll lose to uh, Bianca Belair. I don't know. Maybe this, again, is a means to an end. Uh, everyone shouldn't freak out about Charlotte gets everything. Uh, that's all I saw tonight. Everyone going crazy that Charlotte's the chosen one. She gets handed everything. She's good. Why? Why can't people admit that she's good, DT? I'm. I got into a little rant on Friday that was a very unpopular rant, and I put the clip on YouTube today just to not to trigger people, but just to point it out because I saw Joey Numbers was getting into it with some people online that were just irate at Charlotte winning this belt today. I was going to make a little joke and say, that's yeah. the AEW and them talking. You know, when someone right. is drunk and they're like, oh, that's the liquor talking, I, I was going to yeah. joke and say, that's the AEW people joke. I don't think Charlotte dramatically changes the ratings in NXT. That's not the reason. No. But basically, to summarize my rant from Friday, I felt Charlotte needed to win this title because you look at the Raw roster right now, other than Shayna Baszler feuding with Charlotte, who do you feud with Charlotte next? Oscar, Kyrie Sane, Becky Lynch, been there, done it. Um, yeah. You know, maybe someone else graduates to the main roster, but even with that, you know, it's that person. If he gra if she graduates, if she goes against Becky, then what happens with Charlotte? By putting Charlotte as the NXT Women's Champion. You know, Charlotte actually can help elevate uh, other women in NXT right now. You know, they're going to have that ladder match to determine the number one contendership. I would love to see Io Shirai taking on Charlotte. Charlotte could yeah. take on Bianca Belair, who might be on the main roster. You know, now we'll get into that a little bit later. But mm -hmm. um, Charlotte has a new crop of women that she can face. And yeah... She's got a lot of title reigns. Yeah, she's got a lot of opportunities. But in my opinion, she, and I've been saying this for years now, Charlotte is the best fucking woman that WWE has on their entire roster. I put Asuka number two only mm -hmm. because her communication, you know, abilities with the uh, English speaking public is not as sharp as Charlotte. Charlotte is yeah. the number one woman. And just like a lot of people, you know, thought it was cute to goof on Triple H saying he was demoted, you know. I don't look at it as a demotion. I looked at it that they took Triple H and they put him in a different area where he can help WWE more tremendously. Sometimes you have someone who is in a high executive position and then you realize that this person could help the company better if that person is put in a different area. Charlotte helps bring up some of the women in NXT and maybe helps, you know, uh, groom them to be able to go to the main roster down the line. I'm sorry, nothing against Rhea Ripley, but I'm more fascinated to see Io Shirai, uh, Bianca Belair, and five others against Charlotte than I would against Rhea Ripley. So Charlotte going to NXT gives her a whole new crop of people to face, not to crush or to, you know, to, to j Barry, they job yeah. out. It's, yeah. she brings it up. And for anybody out there that gets into the argument with people online about that, and you agree with me, all you have to do is X that, whoever argues with you say, who should Charlotte feud with next on the Royal roster? Right. And when they sit there and they don't have a fucking answer, now you understand why Charlotte and NXT is that much more important. You know, and Anthony Diaz, the greater good, you know, was dropping the belt. And here's another thing, too. Charlotte, you know, just because Charlotte has the NXT title doesn't mean she's keeping it for a year. She may lose it in a month or two. Exactly. I mean, right, the whole fresh crop of, of new opponents, that's that's the whole thing. She's been there, done that with everybody on the roster in, in the majors, so to speak, even though it's a third brand, but NXT's not really looked at as that anymore. 
Um, again, uh, they probably have plans, whether it's Bianca, whether it's Il Shirai, or any, there's a bunch of other girls too there. Fresh opponents. That's what it's all about. You want to see the same shit over and over again. And Rhea Ripley, again, so young in her career, got a big, big career ahead of her. It doesn't hurt her at all. I, at the, I've been saying this forever. At the end of the day, you know, NXT, it's not its own corporation. It's not World Wrestling Entertainment Incorporated and Next Incorporated. It's all under the World Wrestling Entertainment Incorporated banner. So, you know, Charlotte winning the belt for NXT is not a fucking demotion. It is all under the same company. All right, it's like sending Charlotte to maybe uh, someone who has a franchise, and maybe there's a smaller, you know, uh, business as part of the franchise that kind of needs a little bit of uplift, needs somebody to be like a manager for the, you know, the, the less experienced employees. So you pull someone from the main Amazon office and you send them to one of the Amazon warehouses to help, you know, improve that warehouse. That's what Charlotte is. It's not a fucking demotion. When people say that, I'm like, you know, it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense. And again, do you want Charlotte and Becky Lynch to feud again? Who does Charlotte face on the WWE roster? Shayna Baszler? Yeah. It doesn't feel like it It fits. So Charlotte to NXT, bravo. I'm enjoying that tremendously. I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying it. I, and by the way, the match tonight was excellent. You know, it was. Rhea Ripley is very talented. And she had a nice run. And she'll get a title again. You know, her losing. And I'd rather see Rhea Ripley lose and have a great match than win and have a match that we look back on and say, man, that was shitty. And trust me, when we get to night one, we talk about the women's tag titles. I have a lot to say later about, you know, Alexa Bliss. But uh, tonight's match, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. Me too. Yeah, me uh, too. Thumbs up on that one. Next, we had Alistair Black taking... Oh, by, by the way, you know, we didn't get any America the Beautiful second time around. You know, we oh. got it last night, which was wonderful. Um, what did you think of that? Showing, like, all the a lot of the previous you know, stars, the singers uh, performing America the Beautiful. Every time I think of that, I always think of uh, Aretha Franklin and Vince McMahon saying it. Uh, so I always think of her every time uh, they talk about America the Beautiful. It was nice. It was cool. You know, the the way they uh, presented that, it, it was it was a cool montage. Mm -hmm. I enjoyed it. Ray Charles and Aretha, the two that always stand out for me. But as yeah. I was watching it back, you know, I, I just say it lightheartedly, but I, I'll say it. I was like, man, WWE, like, um, you know, any white singers out there? You know, they're really talented. I mean, I know we got Willie Nelson and, like, Lillian and maybe one yeah. other person. But, you know, it just goes to show you, I mean, just how talented, you know, the black singers are in, you know, soul and just that, you know, that real powerful. I mean, it was just, it was beautiful. But we didn't get that tonight. But uh, getting back to the, back to the matches... We had Alistair Black uh, defeating Bobby Lashley. Um, the match just was what it was. You know, I, I as I said Friday, I don't think Lashley loses anything by losing the match. But personally, I would have rather seen Alistair Black take on Ricochet. Friendly challenge amongst former tag team partners. It just felt so fucking random. You know, Lana really, you know, I, I have nothing against Lana. I've been praising her more than a lot of other people out there. But, you know, there was, re she really, there, she didn't do anything today. I mean, she just stood there and watched and it just felt so random. I, I was, believe it or not, I actually, because I knew what I was going to expect to see in Goldberg versus, you know, Braun Strowman, <coughs> this match... I could probably say interested me less than Goldberg Strowman. Didn't like this match. I didn't like it either. It's one of those random matches where they put, it reminds me of WrestleMania two, where even though Rick Steamboat was hot as shit, they put him against Hercules Hernandez. It was just like, uh, they just <laughs> liked Hercules, but exactly like put him against this big guy and they, their styles didn't gel Steamboat and Hercules. They didn't work. And same thing with Alistair Black. I was wondering how it was going to work with a big bruiser like Lashley. Um, you know, Lashley took his finisher not very well, but 
uh, the Black Mass, and you know he got the pinfall. And they continue to build Alistair Black. I still think Alistair Black is missing that intangible of uh, this uh, charisma, really, to be honest with you. I don't think Alistair has the charisma to be the next Undertaker or be the next big guy. I just, I don't know, he's missing something. I think he connects with the fans to a degree of coolness, but not a personal connection with the right. fans. See, yeah, he hasn't Black, hit that stride yet. You know, I, I like him. I like Alistair Black. I'll yeah, give me it, too. I'll he, give him a chance. I'll give him a chance. He's methodical, and yeah. he's great with a promo. But he's not charismatic. So since there's no crowd there to feed off of his abrupt kicks and stuff like that, you know, you have to depend on the announcers for the energy. And I got to tell you, man, you know, nothing against Tom Phillips and Byron Saxton, but there was one match today that we're going to be getting to very, very soon that they just brought the match down. But uh, we'll, we'll get into it in a moment. Yeah. But, uh, you know, Alistair Black getting the win, I don't think that was very surprising by many. Um, to me, it was just filler. Uh, was not into it. Next, we have uh, Otis taking on Dolph Ziggler on Friday SmackDown. We found out that it was Sonya Deville that was behind the whole thing. I uh, b before we even talk about the match, what did you think about the reveal that went down on Friday? What did I think? Of what? What do you think about the reveal that went down on Friday of Sonya Deville? Oh, with the guy, with the with the guy who's obviously Mustafa Ali. Yeah, uh, that that thing. Well, he's going to be this do-gooder who blows up the spot now on heels with uh, uh, Big Brother cameras, uh, which is probably the, the new gimmick. Um, I was okay with it. I mean, it's like you know, if everybody remembers GTV twenty-two years ago. I guess this is a take on that. I mean, they haven't re obviously. I'm assuming it's Mustafa Ali. They haven't shown him yet, but I'm pretty much thinking he'll be revealed uh, next week on SmackDown. I thought it was okay. I thought it was Sonya Deville. I think you said it was her all along, and I was I no, just well. Was, uh, I, I wanted I it to be Tucker. Yeah, I just thought. Oh, right, right, yeah, yeah, Tucker that was mother honor, Tucker. Right. I just thought it would have just felt so much better that Tucker was jealous that Otis was showing so much time in Mandy and neglecting the tag team and have the team lose multiple times and Tucker just tries to sabotage it. Sonia Deville, you know, look, she's talented, but she's got the charisma of a potted plant. You know, I mean, it's just, I, I wasn't feeling it. Um, by the way, Philip Maffey, thank you very much, my friend. I have a lot to say about Cena and Wyatt in a few minutes, but um, I said this Friday, and I'm only talking in storyline. I don't want anybody to go back to blah, 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 Alam, whatever his name is, Adam Alam. I talk about the character only. Mustafa Ali, he is one creepy motherfucker. He is the heel in this storyline. This motherfucker is putting hidden cameras in women's locker rooms. All right? That's that true. fucking twisted, sick motherfucker. How the fuck did he know that Sonya Deville was going to do that stuff on the phone with Otis? Now, what happened in storyline? Mandy, she's the idiot because Mandy puts the cell phone down and she doesn't go back in the room. Oh, I forgot my cell phone. I forgot my cell phone. Just storyline purposes. Everybody out there that is listening right now we're watching you fucking ever leave your cell phone over somebody's house in five minutes you're like ah, i left, left, forgot my cell phone so what happens in storyline if sonia deville picked up the phone and said mandy you forgot your phone then what the fuck does mustafa ali have a camera in their locker room for and here's the best part and this is why he is the heel right now that's cocksucker <laughs> because the minute that sonia deville typed the digits he doesn't say a word. He lets Dolph Ziggler hit Mandy Rose, and they're hanging out for a couple of weeks. Dolph Ziggler's getting laid, and Mustafa Ali says nothing. He says nothing. He waits until the day before WrestleMania to tell her, think about that for a minute, dude. Kev, you got a best friend. Did you find out that, that or a good friend that somebody's cheating, you know, his, his girlfriend, his wife's right. cheating on him, and you fucking wait four or five weeks to show the footage? What a fucking friend. He had that footage for a month and a half, almost two months, and he held it in the pocket until Friday. I'm talking storyline right now. He, Mustafa Ali is the creepiest motherfucking heel right now. If I was Otis, I'd punch him right in the fucking mouth. Serious. It's true. Yeah. 
He is actually, if you if you analyze it like that, it, he is a heel. He is. He's almost like a, when you think about it, almost like the Sean O'Hare character, like the Devil's Advocate, almost like purposely planting trouble and not calling anybody out on it until the time is right. Yeah. So it's interesting. It's interesting if he's going to be this heroic guy, who, the social do-gooder. But really, what he's doing is withholding information. Yeah. I mean, seriously, just <laughs> he was just, a guy. He used to be a cop too. Yeah. Just think about that. <laughs> he, he fucking puts cameras in women's locker rooms. You know, and then he gets this stuff and he finds out that this guy is getting getting shitted on and getting swerved and everything, and he fucking holds it for six weeks. You're wow. fucking, he, he's fucked but up, man. Mustafa the Ali, the, you, the, you're the fucked up. Withholder. You are oh, a heel. Yeah. You are a he creepy a motherfucker putting cameras in women's locker rooms. You, you're creepy. Um, and again, we're just talking about the character. Yeah. We're not talking about him in real life. He, he's a, yeah. a, a gem of a person. We talked two weeks ago on how he was giving his own money to the indie promotion in Flor in Chicago, helping yeah. them because of what's going on. The guy is is a good guy. Oh, Character-wise, yeah. you know, I, I hope people out there could just think of the common sense of this whole thing. And Mustafa Ali is a fucking, he's a bastard, man. <laughs> you know, he's not a stalker, Zach Rayner. Um, DDP, you know, was stalking Undertaker because he, I think he wanted Sarah. You know, yeah. Ali, I, I don't think, what does he want out of this? You know, uh -huh. and just think about that. He's got this whole computerized setup, disguising his voice, interfering with TV segments. I mean, what a fucking idiot. He puts his actual logo just think about that for a minute. If I that's like me st pranking your house, Kev, for like six weeks, and I <laughs> keep my number visible on the caller ID when I hang up on you. <laughs> we can't figure out who this is. It's yeah. DT. No, is it? Ah, I don't know. Maybe that storyline was just for the mentally retarded that actually just want to see like a love storyline for Valentine's Day. It was just, man, you just dissect that. That is one horrendous twist in this storyline. Ali is, 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 he, I'm telling you, he's creepy Ali. That's what I think I'm going to call him from now on. His character, he's creepy Ali. Seriously. Creepy and when Ali. people start go, going on his page, like, why did everybody call me creepy Ali? Well, now you know why. So, but anyway, the match itself, you know, I think we all said it on Friday that Mandy Rose was going to come out, smack the bejesus out of uh, Sonya Deville, you know, low blow Dolph Ziggler. And then, um, you know, Otis gets the win. He gets the girl. He slaps a nice hot kiss on her and yep. they walk off into the sunset and they quarantine themselves in the next two weeks. Yeah, I mean, there was that storyline conclusion when you think about it. I mean, it was a little convoluted here and there, and it got messed up a little bit along the ways. But uh, she came out, slapped the shit out of Sonya Deville when she came out. She hit her hard. It's like I hit her in the ear. And, um, yeah, she kissed her. It wasn't a big make-out thing. But, you know, it wasn't a big Macho Man Liz kiss, but it was it was good. And, uh, again, it was what people wanted to see. He winds up with Mandy, and I guess she'll valet for him now. Or I don't know what this means for him and Tucker. Is she going to be with the tag team? Is she going to play his girlfriend? Are they going to go on with this with her accompanying him to the ring? I would think so. That's the smart play. I think they should play out a, a thing where she's kind of uh, involved with them. And leads. and DT, you know, that could also lead to Tucker dissension down the road of her being with them as a team, as you know. Yeah. You know, Tucker has you know, nobody. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, they exactly. both got so, girls. He ain't got nobody. Tucker's got nobody. He ain't yeah, got you know. nobody. By the way, Benjamin, before you try to start playing a race card, when I impersonate any wrestler, I usually have an accent, so it doesn't sound like my regular voice. So when I was saying uh, Ali before, it's not making fun of him. You know, I don't hear you saying anything when I, you know, impersonate other wrestlers and I have an accent. So I just wanted to throw that out there because I know some people immediately have vicious, dirty thoughts, none whatsoever. I've been singing the praise for Ali the last couple of weeks more than any other fucking podcast out there. So, and I know you don't mean anything, you know, angst, but I got to throw that out there. But uh, the match was filler today. You know, it was the right way to finish the storyline for now. I guess Dolph Ziggler is going to feud with Ali um, eventually. Right now, we'll probably have maybe some mixed tag you know, maybe they already recorded a mixed tag match with Mandy and and uh, Otis versus Sonya and Dolph Ziggler. Yeah, so, that's probably the way to go right now for for, for now, and then uh, phase that out, and then eventually the uh, dissension with Tucker 
keeping Mandy involved in the angle. Or yeah. maybe not. Who, who knows? You know? Yeah. Um, what happened to Ricochet? No idea. See, this is the no thing. Idea. You know, and I said this about other people who are, who, you know, we're not. We said a month ago that showing up in Florida was optional, whether it was WWE or even AEW to an extent, even though they're now in Georgia. Um, and they may have to get up and go somewhere else too. Um, it's optional. So Ricochet, he might have been comfortable two weeks ago, and maybe now because the virus is really, you know, you got to understand something. Two, three, well, three weeks ago, I thought, you know, hopefully two weeks, you know, things will be a lot better. Now we realize that, you know, it may be a month before things get better. You know, as time goes by, we start to learn a lot more about, we know more about this virus now than we did three weeks ago. So, you know, the, there's a thousand reasons why Ricochet may be concerned right now and decide to stay home. Maybe WWE just didn't have anything for him for Mania. We don't know, um, but I don't think we should speculate because I didn't think it was fair when people immediately started thinking the worst about Carmella and Dana Brooke and Rey Mysterio and some others. You know, maybe one or all of them had something. Maybe they didn't. But until they reveal it, you know, I think people should not speculate. You know, they, just Paige. Remember, Paige, there was no reports of her having coronavirus. And there was people speculating that. And she self-quarantined herself because she was afraid. She wasn't yeah. sick. She was afraid. So, but, uh, you know, so getting back to the match, you know, the, the right ending for WrestleMania happened with Otis. I was joking earlier that, I'm kind of glad we had an empty arena today so we didn't have to see any fucking women in the crowd crying because Otis finally got the girl. You know? I always think back to that WrestleMania where Macho Man had that retirement match with Ultimate Warrior and then oh, Sherry yeah, turned on Macho Man and Miss Elizabeth with those ugly black pants made the save and <laughs> they reunited in that one girl. Oh, man. There's clips of I posted clips on Twitter earlier today. That one girl crying hysterical, and Bobby Heenan laughing at her hysterically. My one of my favorite. That's a WrestleMania moment for me. Twenty nine years ago. Yeah. yeah. The the girl was crying, and they put the camera on her, and Bobby Heenan just started laughing hysterically. It was <laughs> wonderful. Oh she was God. so ugly. Sorry. <laughs> oh Jesus. She was ugly. Next, we had the match. That didn't want to end Edge oh, versus Randy Orton. You know, um, DT, what's the time on that? Anybody have the exact time on yeah, that match? Yeah, chat. Anybody go on Wiki and pull the time on that match? Because I'll tell you this, man. You know, the commentary was terrible. Yeah. They were terrible. very mundane about it. It had they had their moments here and there. I realized this you know people need to understand this too and i'm not trying to justify it but um you know that match was edited tremendously and the thing is is that you can't have live play-by-play -play when things are heavily edited just imagine them brawling live on a pay-per-view and you have that commentary and then if you have to cut here and cut here, cut here, that commentary could overlap pieces that you don't see anymore. They did the match first. Then they had Saxton and Phillips do the play-by-play -play afterwards. Right. That's why, you know, you know, when you see things afterwards, they're reacting to what they're seeing on the screen. It, it, okay, Xavier Bruce, thank you. 36 minutes, 35 seconds. Drew Pellin, wow. thank you. Chat side, thank you. Uh, Cress, thank you. Thank, but thanks, yeah, that, honestly, that was about 10 minutes too long, in my opinion. It told a good story. Um, I liked early on, you know, the verbiage, the talking smack. That disappeared for about 20 minutes. And um, it just dragged. I mean, it got creative. It was cool because we got a nice tour at a performance center. I just wanted to see the plumbing in the bathrooms. I wanted to see if they had nice sinks and stuff like that. I mean, we saw almost every room in the performance center. Um, there was one spot. I know some people are going to be like, wow, that's really fucked up, DT. But I'm going to say it anyway. 
Anybody out there, when Randy Orton took that workout equipment, wrapped it around Edge's neck, and so I, I tell you, man, if that was Daniel Bryan with Justin Roberts, I think Daniel Bryan would have been fired if that was live on WrestleMania today because the minute Randy Orton did that thing to Edge, I'm like, okay, you know, dark side of the moon, the ring or whatever. I don't know. I immediately got Chris Benoit vibes when I, yeah, people like, don't say it, don't say it. I say what I say. It looks, you, I don't, I, I, it's fucked up, but you just had the Benoit fucking documentary two weeks ago. H how does so many people on the net see that spot? And especially that it's not live. You don't think that's almost like when Cornette bringing up, you know, the, the Ethiopia and the bucket of chicken in the back of the thing that escaped so many people in NWA and made YouTube. You know, Lagana passed everybody up. And then after people got outraged, oh my God, you I guarantee you there are gonna be people outraged at WWE for showing that little clip because I immediately thought Benoit. Benoit. Yeah. You know, how does somebody in WWE editing, when it's a not a live match, doesn't look at that and say Oh boy, you know, that's that's kind of like, you know, we just had that Benoit Vice thing, you know, you just, you know, take it, uh, 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 think about that a minute. Workout equipment, wrapping it around the neck, pulling it downward, there's weights in the back. How does that pass the WWE offices? I don't know. I don't know if you thought that, but as soon I'm as it's going to now, like, now that you're saying it, I'm thinking it, but I, I didn't think it before you said it. Yeah, I saw that, and I was I was gonna write something online, and I'm like, you know, I can't. I was I kind of felt guilty about the Nicholas comment, you know, because there was that one picture of Undertaker hugging AJ from yesterday, mm -hmm. and if anybody looks at that picture on my Twitter at Don Tony D, maybe I'll post it here later. But uh, I looked at the back of it, I'm like, that looks like Nicholas. Braun Strowman's tag team champion, and for for a minute I was fantasizing that. Wow, it would have been cooler. Undertaker would have fucking did that to Nicholas yesterday, so he never oh. is in a match ever again. But I just don't understand that. You know, it just reminded me of the Trevor Murdoch comment from Jim Cornette. I mean, how does that pass all of these areas and make air and nobody says? Just how does somebody, even though it was a cool spot, but... Somebody in the office is, oh, you know, I don't think we should show that part. You know, I, I just, I don't know. I, I saw that and I was like, wow, that's kind of like weird that they put that on TV. But what'd you some think of the just, match overall? Some things just get by, some things just get by people. But I like, I mean, I love, I'm such a big Edge fan, you know that. So, I mean, I watched the documentary uh, today, this afternoon, loved it. But the match, so I was geared up for the match from watching the documentary. Um, I thought, you know, again, they work well together. They were their real life friends, tag team partners for years. Um, I think they they put on a good match, but it was way too long. It went on too long, thirty six, almost thirty seven minutes. That's too much, man. Twenty minutes tops should have been about as long as uh, Taker and AJ last night, and especially in a taped segment, uh, it just went on too long. The finish, uh, the the conclusion was good. The concerto, I knew he was got. I thought for a second he was going to pull back, not hit him with a chair. Orton was selling like a motherfucker, like he was dying. Um, I like the ending, but I could have did without a lot of the filler. But it was nice to get a tour of the uh, performance center, Anthony. You know that was cool to get the, to get to see the performance center. Was nice. the, the match told the story it needed to tell? I think because it was about ten minutes too long, I think it underwhelmed a lot of people. Um, yeah. The only part that I really did not like in the match, other than, you know, the spot that I was talking about, is at the very end when Randy Orton's head is on one of the chairs and Edge is standing there contemplating if he's going to do what he's going to do. Randy Orton was laid out on the chair. Why didn't the fucking referee count to 10? It was just like That's silence. And the camera's yeah. focused on Edge's face. And I'm saying to myself, why is the referee not counting the 10 right now? I mean, I, I understand. That he did, yeah, there was a couple of times that he didn't count. There was a couple. Yeah, of times there was a couple of times that Randy Orton. By the way, you know, that's that's a nice coronavirus test too. You know, for your referees, just have them count very loud to ten about a hundred times, and they, if they don't cough and start sounding like you know, like a paper, crumbling a paper bag, you probably think that they're okay. But you know, I I thought the match 
told a great story, not giving up, you know, just taking pain to the very end. Um, I liked when Edge climbed the gate that's, you know, was above them in that conference room or whatever. Um, you know, Edge getting the win, I think, was the right way to go. At the very end, when Edge was contemplating on doing a concerto, I thought for a second, like you said, maybe he pulls back and doesn't do it. And instead, Randy Orton hits him with the RKO and maybe does a concerto again and gets the win. And that brief pause of Edge showing sympathy cost him the victory. But they decided to go the other route. Edge gets his revenge. Edge looked great. Uh, tomorrow, I'm going to watch that documentary that everybody's talking Quality matches. You know, if you think about it, Undertaker... Yeah. AJ Styles, Randy Orton, Edge, John Cena, you know, like they were the ones that they really, you know, focused on, you know, they, they, those were going to be the, the guys and, uh, but you know, the match, you know, not a bad match, but just, they took a little bit too long. Yeah. So next we had uh, the tag team title match, Street Profits retaining against Garza and, um, what the fuck's his name? Austin Theory. Austin Theory. Mm -hmm. You know, I almost feel like they already taped uh, an intergender six-person tag team match for Raw tomorrow night. That's what it felt like. Yeah. Um, match very, very quick. You know, it followed Edge and Orton, so you know it was going to be a hard follow. Yeah. You know, match was what it was. It ended very quickly. Um, after the match is over, Theory and Garza are beating down the Street Profits, and Bianca Belair makes the save. So we have Bianca Belair and Zelina Vega going at it a little bit. Um, what did you think of this match? Uh, I didn't think much of it, to be honest with you. Um, it was cool to see Bianca Belair come out. It's not like they've hidden the fact that she's married to uh, Montez Ford, but uh, I think you're right, DT. I think it's going to mean that you might even see her with Street Profits once they start taping or whatever I, like i said everything's so up in the air right now uh when they go back to the you know crowds or whatever the main arenas um so i i, I thought it was okay i just you know again it, it kind of was uh following up a you know 35 36 minute match with edge and randy orton i was kind of taking it was kind of a tweener for me i was kind of taking a little break after that yeah i think you know, a lot so of people them, but, you know i was i think a lot of people the, got up took a leak Maybe got something to drink, yeah. reheat True, some that's what I did. food, you know, and kind of like, you know, just listen to that match in the background. It was one of those matches that you really didn't give a shit, you know, but uh, Street Profits retain. And uh, like I said, I wouldn't be surprised if we have a six person intergender match for. I think Raw tomorrow is going to be mostly highlights of WrestleMania. Think so? Yeah. yeah. I think so. Maybe we get one or two quick matches. Um, you could see on both nights when they recorded certain matches because, you know, one moment you got uh, JBL and Cole on commentary, and it wasn't like, oh, well, they just got up and went away because Roar is now on TV and stuff like that. You could just tell that they recorded a lot of stuff on different nights. So, but Street Profits, you know, they get the win. A little underwhelming, but yeah. again, it just felt like filler. You know, Austin Theory getting a tag title match, eh, right place, right time, too soon. Yep. But uh, next, five women elimination match, Lacey Evans versus Sasha versus Tamina versus Naomi versus the SmackDown Women's Champion Bayley. Uh, you know, I was thinking about this earlier. When was the last time... Um, we've seen any skin from Tamina. I was just thinking about that, like Instagram, <laughs> websites, Twitter, it? Facebook, like <laughs> I'm not, and I'm not saying nudity. I'm just saying like, um, I can't remember the last time I've ever seen Tamina's legs, her arms. You know, I think all we see is like in skin wise, we just see her, her head and her hands. Yeah. I'm seriously. Uh, you do a Google search. I don't. She's not ugly. I. But you know, you just see what I'm talking about. I can't remember I'm, the last time I've seen any type of skin on Tamina. I haven't seen her like 
you know, wearing shorts in the gym or maybe I didn't look hard enough, but uh, fuck cares if she's married. What, you can't wear a pair of shorts at the deli? <laughs> so I think the last time we saw Skin is when she debuted with the Usos. How many years ago was that? Yeah, now? it's like 12, 13 that? years ago. 13 years ago. And Something like that. Different, different looking woman. She's morphing into Nia Jax. She's looking more and more like Nia Jax. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I don't know why she was in this match. They could have drafted somebody from NXT uh, up to this uh, division. Um, you know, Lacey Evans, I, I continue to just shake my head. This horrible entrance music, stressed like Donald Duck tonight. I don't know what, what, what that outfit is. I, I wish they would just let her be the military woman that she is. I hate this Southern Belle thing. I want this thing to end. I want them to change her gimmick. Uh, you know, I like her as a wrestler. She's a good-looking woman, but I cannot. These outfits are, are horrendous. Her, her outfit tonight was the American flag with the gold fringe. I, I get that, but it's just what the way she comes out in that hat and the music is the, the entrance music is cringed. He did it's horrible, and there's Tamina and then Naomi, who's played out dance nonsense. I thought it was funny when Bailey said, "Go dance yourself back to the dressing room." I thought that was pretty funny, but uh, and Bailey's horrible haircut. Uh, I was rooting for Sasha to be honest with you. I was at the point where I was just like, I I can't stand from a visual sense most of them, so I was. Uh, hoping Sasha would turn and it looks like there's shades of that happening but overall I kind of got into the match after they got rid of the two they got rid of Naomi uh and they got rid of Tamina I was more into it then when Lacey went one-on-one -on -one, she limited she knocked out Sasha and then it was just our uh Sasha coming in to help I, I thought I liked the second half of that match I thought yeah. it was okay you could see the seeds starting to be planted for ultimately a Bailey versus Sasha match yeah. Um, you know, I actually, like I said, I ran the table today with predictions. I wanted Bailey to retain. A lot of people thought Sasha Banks. Um, you know, at one point, Bailey inadvertently hit Sasha, which is actually, I think, something they had said on Friday. And, you know, towards the end, even after Sasha got eliminated, she helped Bailey get the win. And I yeah. think this is to set up, you know, for Sasha Banks, she wants to take that title from Bailey match was fine you know again i liked the extra you know grunting and groaning and selling of the moves i mean that's one thing that was fabulous you know this this paper you know the two nights together um you know the last two weeks the promos leading up to mania have been excellent because they gave the wrestlers more time than usual but um you know the match was fine um you know, Naomi, again, you know, and she was getting s some shots and even the submission move when she tapped out, you know, she, you know, no sound, no verbiage. But, yeah. um, you know, Lacey Evans, at one point, I started thinking, oh, my God, they may actually give her this title. But it just it just doesn't feel like it's her time yet, even though I've always appreciated, you know, her military background. But, you know, when the cameras are on, you know, I don't want somebody getting a belt simply because I admire them personally. It's because they deserve it, whether in you know it's the right time as far as a fan to to buy into it. But Bailey retaining, you know, it's going to be interesting to see where it goes. But um, I was very surprised. I don't know if I still can't figure out if it's a joke with Mish that Mish was really rooting for Tamina to win the belt today and. He actually predicted Tamina. And I don't. Is Mish really a fan of Tamina, or is this just a running joke? Do you know? Uh, he, no, I think Mish is a huge fan of Tamina. Really? Okay. All right. Yeah, no, I like totally it. respect he, that. He, but he, he booed me when I said Tamina. <laughs> I I posted uh, Tamina gets the same reaction in an arena full of people that she got tonight. Yeah. And Mish would Mish would boo on on my uh, I'm telling on my you. comment section. Her theme he music, me. you know, like sometimes when you hear a song, like not live in the crowd and it sounds a little bit different. Tamina came out tonight. I'm like, yeah, that sound, that song sounds exactly the same as it does even when there's crowd there. You know, it's just, you know, look, she's getting up there in age. She doesn't have many years left. Um, I don't think she'll get the natty run, you know, before she's gone. She's not a bad, you know, wrestler, but she just never had that, personality where she connected with the crowd i always thought that she was going to have an extended comedic run like an oddball pairing with somebody get a little bit more of a personality on tamina 
Just mm-hmm. never, I mean, you add little clips here and there in segments, but nothing really to, you know, try to like, you know, show a di- real different side of her. So, but, um, you know, she didn't get it. I don't think there was any chance of that, but uh, Bailey retains today. Not a bad match. No, not bad. You know, I think some people really thought Sasha was going to get it. I, um, I, I even said this Friday, I thought, Charlotte winning the NXT championship was the only belt that was going to change hands on the women's side. I even predicted that Becky was going to retain as well. She was, we'll get to her in a, in a couple of moments, but next we had Bray Wyatt versus John Cena. I don't even know how to explain (laughs) this. It it wasn't, I don't know how to explain it. You know, it wasn't a match. It was almost, you know what it reminded me of? It reminded me of somebody who dies and is in purgatory. And you're trying to get to heaven. And they're showing like a retrospect. Maybe that mixed in with like a nightmare on Elm Street where you fall asleep. And then all of a sudden you're in some type of dilemma. Because that's what it felt like. John Cena, and for the people that didn't see it, you know, again, I know some people are going to agree with me. Some people are going to think I'm nuts. I enjoyed Cena and Wyatt a lot more than I did Taker and AJ Styles for different reasons. The creativity tonight was fabulous. You know, they basically had Bray Wyatt, and Bray Wyatt was almost like doing a retrospect of the last bunch of years. And he's in the ring, and he's, you know, sweater, current Bray Wyatt sweater. And, you know, John Cena is supposed to come out for his match. And then they do, you know, the special effects and the editing, like I said they were going to do. And next thing you know, John Cena's in the Firefly Funhouse. And he's talking to the puppets. Rambling Rabbit is telling him, you know, he, he went through that door. It's okay, dude. Go through that door. It's okay, dude. He opens the door. It's pitch black. And I'm having flashbacks when I used to go in a haunted house, a great adventure. You know, when you sit in the ride and everything is pitch black and then all of a sudden somebody pops out and scares the shit out of you. And the next thing we know, um, Bray Wyatt is reciting word for word. He's like, this is your life, John Cena. Because he's reciting word for word, Kurt Angle, when John Cena made his debut. And he's in the ring Bray Wyatt doing the exact thing that Kurt Angle did. And the next thing you know, John Cena comes out dressed exactly like his debut. And they ask him, like, and they had the Vince McMahon puppet. Do you have what it takes? You have that ruthless aggression. And they were like mocking John Cena because John Cena kept saying, ruthless aggression, ruthless aggression, ruthless aggression. And, you know, Bray Wyatt disappears. Um, I, I'm telling you, man, I fucking loved it because it felt like a dream. It felt like purgatory. It felt like Nightmare on Elm Street. It just felt yeah. like mocking, poking fun, doing the NWO skit, doing thugonomics. And he's poking fun at his thugonomic stuff. And, you know, like, and Bray Wyatt is going along with it as well. I, I, What was your thoughts of this overall, what we had? <laughs> it wasn't a match. No, it wasn't a match. I think that's that's what I, I got from it. It was kind of like the Nightmare on Elm Street Dream Warriors kind of thing. Like where it got a, 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 yeah, the SmackDown the fist. The fist returned when Cena yeah. came out. Yeah, I mean, I thought I was trying to grasp what it was at first, and then I, I says, oh, this is a little like when Nightmare on Elm Street got a little hokey. Um, it was a, yeah, it was kind of a, a nightmare dream sequence thing. It was definitely taking off a few movies, the concept of it. Um, you know, it looked like, I, I can't really explain it. Yeah, everyone's like, hey, what did I just watch? But most people, it was funny, while I was watching it, I was thinking to myself, uh, this is going to get a lot of negativity. I could see it now, but I was wrong when I went back to Twitter right after it concluded 
everyone's like, I fucking loved it. I loved it. Like everyone it was, was like a movie. It was like watching yeah, across the boards. I really thought DT while I was watching it. I'm like, Oh boy. I, I'm only can imagine when I refresh my page on Twitter. I'm like, here we go. But no, I was wrong. It was L- nine out of 10. People said they loved it. Yeah. Listen, for those in the chat right now that are bringing up like, Oh, Bray Wyatt's dead and he disappears and he's behind Cena. They did that yesterday with Undertaker. I didn't right. see anybody complain when Undertaker was laid out in the grave, and then all of a sudden, when AJ Styles is about to put dirt on him, Undertaker is behind him. You know, uh, they they it's just done differently. Um, you know, two shots at Nikki Bella. I picked up on one yesterday. And they did one today too. I don't know if anybody picked up on it, but yesterday when they did the opening montage for the WrestleMania. And they had that guy, oh, a pirate, he talking like that. When he got to John Cena, he called John Cena fearless. That was Nikki Bella's gimmick. Remember his shirt, fearless? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He I called mean, John catch- Cena fearless yesterday. I fearless. If you but watch today- it tonight, there was a couple. You watch, go back and watch tonight. Like, I'll go back and watch it like I did with uh, uh, Taker and AJ, and I watched several times. Did anybody was- catch the one tonight? Anybody catch the one tonight when Bray Wyatt was in the ring with Cena? Did you hear what Bray Wyatt said to take the little shot at Nikki Bella? Oh, no, nobody's nobody picked it up. Wow. I, I, I didn't tweet one? it tonight, but when John Cena went to put his hands on Bray Wyatt early on in the skit, okay, resurgence, got to give him credit because he picked up on it. What Bray Wyatt said, you could look, but you can't touch. Remember? You could look, but you can't touch. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. I did say that. Okay. <laughs> I loved it, man. They fucking, they did the Vince McMahon with um, Mercy the Buzzard. Mercy the Buzzard playing Macho Man and Vince at commentary. This is good shit. Good shit. And then they did, oh, my favorite part of the whole fucking segment. I, I, I mean, it blew me away that they bought some licensing for Metallica yesterday. But I fucking popped because one of my biggest disappointments about the WWE Network, and I brought this up countless times when I was doing a history show, I fucking can't stand watching Saturday night's main event on the WWE Network, and they ta- they dubbed over Animotion. And yeah. tonight on fucking WrestleMania, they dipped into their pocket to pay a little royalties to Animotion, and we got Obsession, the opening oh, sign. I Good song I, too. Th- that that made my night. It made my night. It was just, cre- it was just science fiction. That again, you know, we watched, you know, Kane and see no evil. I mean, you know, like when you're watching a science fiction or horror movie or, or something like that, you know, you get whacked out out thing out of out of you know things that are way out there that's what it felt like tonight some people said it felt like an acid trip i don't know what an acid trip feels like even though i think i smoked it once but um this i thought it was wonderful they did a spoof of nwo and bray wyatt's playing eric bischoff and john cena i guess he was doing hogan but the cyanite's main event thing you know they had like bray wyatt behind like a cage um, what was John Cena trying to play Hulk Hogan when he was doing a workout thing? Who I'm trying to figure out who was playing who. I think John Cena was playing Macho Man, and Bray Wyatt was playing Hogan. Yeah, I would say that much. Yeah, but um, I loved it, man. I loved it. Um, I gotta go back. I gotta go back and watch it again. I mean, again, when I said I, what am I watching here? I wasn't making like I hated it. I was just kind of. I was more focused on what other people were going to think about it as I was watching it. Yeah, because, see, again, I, it, it was a weird thing. It wasn't. It wasn't as cut and dry, in my opinion, as watching the AJ Undertaker thing. This was a little bit convoluted. It was a little bit of a mishmash. But that was. It was supposed to be that way because of the concept of Bray Wyatt's world is wacky and convoluted in a lot of ways. So, uh, again, I, I'll go back and watch it again. I'll probably like it even more. But when I tweeted what I tweeted, it wasn't. Any kind of dig or being cryptic, I I was kind of not. I was kind of taking it all in, but I got to go watch it again. But I thought it was it was supposed to be with Bray Wyatt and Cena. You know, again, was a good sport. Uh, but Bray gets the win because clearly he put him in the uh, what was it, the mandible claw? Yeah. And got and got the victory. So that it was technically a match, and Bray Wyatt won the match because people were saying 
that was there a match that is this official did he actually beat john cena yeah he yeah. did yeah see it yeah he beat him um you know there's a little bit of uh this dispute online some people say cena did hogan some people saying cena did uh t where some people say Bray Wyatt did Hogan. One thing is for sure, when they did the NWO thing, Bray Wyatt was doing Eric Bischoff. And it was lighthearted. It was it was funny. Yeah. Cena yeah. doing the different themes. You know, the one thing that I had a hard time with was the hair. You know, like, I, I know he's going to go and do movies again, but right now with the fucking virus, nobody's really doing movies. I It would have been great if they did something with his hair. But again, just going through the different phases of John Cena's career, poking fun at it, playing the old entrance themes, him actually doing thugonomics for a little while. But the way they did it, when he did the nuts thing, like he was mocking himself. There was a lot of mocking of John Cena during this. Then Bray Wyatt doing his old Wyatt family thing, sitting in the rocking chair. And then, you know, he shows up as the fiend at the end. I loved it. I loved it. I love, because I used to be a DJ, and I used to love mixing tunes. And anybody that's on Patreon knows we talked recently about some whacked out, you know, tunes, which people call mashups now. But I did one 30 years ago of uh, Biz Marquee, you know, Nobody Beats the Biz, and Phil Collins, In the Air Tonight. And anybody on Patreon, you heard it. And you hear the beginning of In the Air Tonight, and then when it fucking, after the beginning with the drums, you hear Bismarcky, dun, dun, and it just, the way it mixed, I got it on a fucking record. I got my friends who used to own twice as good, the radio, they made a 12-inch record for me, and I fucking put it on a record. So I just love, you know, with mashups, taking different things and trying to creatively put it together. And again, it just felt like Purgatory meets, you know, uh, Nightmare on Elm Street meets some acid trip stuff. I loved, I loved it. So, but um, moving on. It was, it was definitely, definitely something different. But yeah. there was a match and, and Bray did win the match. Yeah. Um, main event, Drew McIntyre defeats Brock Lesnar for the title. You know, basically Brock kicked out of a couple of Claymore kicks, uh, Drew kicked out of a couple of F5s. The way they were doing it was when Drew kicked out from the first F5, he kicked out at one. When he kicked out of the second F5, he kicked out at two. When he kicked out of the third F5, he kicked out at two and a half. But ultimately, Drew McIntyre gets the upper hand. Um, you know, look, my prediction was Drew McIntyre winning, but I had also said I would have I would have been fine with him winning by disqualification. Because I just wish that he would have been able to climb that. I said it Friday. I would have loved to have seen him climb that turnbuckle and soak in that crowd pop. Because I said it for weeks leading up to the Royal Rumble. He was my pick to win the Rumble. I knew that that crowd was going to erupt. And it just feels like, man, you know, I know in history books, He's got that WrestleMania win, but I would have loved for them to wait a month or two if we get live crowds back that soon and have Drew get the title. But Drew is the champion now. I think Brock Lesnar goes on a month or two hiatus. What did you think of the match? Well, you know, it was pretty short and sweet. I wasn't sure they were going to put the belt on Drew. I saw his documentary, too, um, today, which is very good. And, you know, when he got the word that they were going to put this in the development the uh, center with no crowd and the, the hurt and sorrow on his face was apparent, but he got his head around it. Um, and he, you know, was happy to just be in the championship picture. And today he got his title shot. And again, I was thinking as it started, I'm like, they're not giving him the belt. There's no way they're going to want to put it with a crowd. They want to get a reaction. Let Brock hold on to it another month when they get back in action, whenever this Corona craziness uh, dies down, there'll be another day for Drew. And that's what I was thinking. I was already, I was already going writing in the res I was like, I'm running my notes. I'm already running. Drew loses because I just assumed he was going to lose. Then when he won, I was like, Holy shit! That you actually you're going to put the strap on him. You know, Brock's laying out there. Claymore kick. Brock, you know, sold it, lied in the in the ring while he's celebrating. And I was really surprised, ET. I really thought for something like this, the biggest title that they would, uh, you know, especially with Braun winning last night. I figured, no, not two title changes, both world titles. 
Uh, because Goldberg is just a holding champion. I get it. He's part-timer. Brock is here. Brock's got a contract. He'll be here for a while. I don't know why they did it, DT. I, I would have thought with the big buildup, give this young man his uh, due in front of a crowd. Unless they really, DT, you think unless they really don't know when they're going to be back in front of crowds? Well, that's the thing. just like, let's proceed with what we're going to do because we don't know what the future is right yeah, now. Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, I agree with a lot of people. Yes, when they do live crowds again, he could get the, I, the pop then. But, you know, just keep in mind also, Getting winning a belt doesn't mean you're going to keep it for that long. There's You can't be 100% sure that he's going to have that belt by the time they do crowds again. It's no guarantee. And I know they got creative the last couple of days. Drew said, you know, everybody, since I can't, I won't have live crowds, you know, you could show your reaction online and play it. I can't wait to see those videos of fans popping in their living rooms because you know it's going to happen, dude. Nobody's thinking about this, but I can't wait. And I'm not hoping this, but I just can't wait. You know, they they open a Pandora's box with this. When they say, oh, you know, Drew's telling the fans, record your reaction, put it online so we could see how you reacted. And you know what's going to happen? You're going to see tons and tons of people popping like crazy. And guess what? You're going to see five, six, seven, eight people in the same fucking room. And people are going to be like, what is this fucking social distancing? Why are there fucking WrestleMania parties? Why You watch. You're going to see clips online of people popping big for Drew winning, and there's going to be like four, five, six people in the same fucking room. And you're going to realize it's WrestleMania parties, you know? these are the, So I'm not shitting on it, but, you know, unfortunately right now, I can't even see my parents. You know what I mean? It's like... You, yeah, that's what's yeah. going to happen. You're going to see online. And I, I feel bad for the fans who are going to post that because they are fans of Drew McIntyre and they are going to hear it from the trolls. The fuck you got six people in your fucking living room couch for? What the fuck with the social distancing? What if you infect people? I'm telling you, you're going to see it. I know. Yeah. Zoom parties are awesome, man. People I don't know. You have different people on cameras, not actually in the same room. But I tell you, from top to bottom, I enjoyed tonight's, night two, more than I enjoyed night one. Overall, I'm just saying as far as matches, numerous matches were good today. Edge Orton, Charlotte Rhea, Cena Wyatt was my favorite, and even Drew Brock, you know, because it kind of told the story, you know, trying to, you know, kick out of each other's finisher and just going at it. You know, they're, they're not guys that you go 20 minutes with, but um, pretty damn good. So now we go to night one, opening dark match, Cesaro getting the victory over Drew Gulak. My, my favorite part of the match, Cesaro doing like the airplane spin without holding Drew Gulak. Did you see that? Yeah, I saw it. I mean, he's just spinning around with Gulak on his shoulders. It's a momentum and it's a scientific thing, but that that is impressive. I I love Cesaro's creativity. It was a decent match. Um, again, I, I don't know where this leaves Buddy Murphy. Uh, excuse me, Drew Gulak. It reminds me of Buddy Murphy um, when he was having the feud with Alistair Black. You know, they had that phenomenal match on pay-per-view, and then they had yeah. this, you know, this this feud, multiple matches, and I'm like, they ain't going to give fucking uh, Buddy Murphy one win, and they didn't. And then they gave him the tag belts with Seth Rollins, and it just didn't feel like, you know, I, I don't know what the purpose with that was. You know, Drew Gulak, him teaming up with Daniel Bryan, I love it, but... I don't, I don't know, man. I, I Drew, Drew Gulak doesn't see... He beat Nakamura, but like I said on Friday, he fucking beat Nakamura. Gulak should have gotten the title shot. Yeah. He won it for Daniel Bryan, and Daniel Bryan lost. You know, like, why didn't Gulak get the shot? I mean, why couldn't Gulak have the match against Sami Zayn with Daniel Bryan in his corner? Because he's Drew Gulak. <laughs> yeah, because he's Drew Gulak. <laughs> exactly. But uh, it wasn't a bad match. Dark match, but, you know, not a bad match. You know, nice way to open up last night. Um, now we get to the women's tag match. Asuka, Kyrie Sane, anybody who follows all these shows on a weekly basis, you know 
about five or six weeks ago, I said, ah, fuck, I'm starting to get worried. I have a feeling they're going to give have them face a moment to piss at WrestleMania, and they're going to lose the belts. I, I predicted Oscar and Kyrie to win because I honestly felt they are just that much better than Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross. Nothing against them personally, and especially the way that they've had Oscar. You know, like she lost to Becky uh, to Alexa Bliss recently. You know, she get a win back at Mania. I didn't like this match at all. They worked hard at points. They all did a good job in the ring, but Alexa Bliss, nothing against her personally. Look at the finish. Look at her moves. I mean, this was pre-recorded. You'd think they would have just done a retake or redo or something. I mean, they have house shows where you hear like, you know, the ending of the match was did not go off the way, so they restarted the match. Uh, I just, I, I cannot get into a moment to piss as the tag champs. No, I can't either. I mean, uh, I get on my last nerve, honestly. I used to like her. Uh, now she's become a, like the, the, the kiss-ass chorus for uh, Alexa Bliss. I get that's what she's supposed to do. That's what they're telling her what to do. But I don't like I don't like this team at all, Alexa and Nikki. I'm not a fan. Who do you get a few with next? Uh, unless they bring back the iconics under a new gimmick, oh. which is what I'm what, what I'm hearing about. Because they show Peyton Royce and Billy Kay working out like mother effers on uh, Instagram. So I think they're and Peyton and Billy are looking different in their pictures. So I think there's a different gimmick coming for them, DT. So I think the iconics are coming back under a different gimmick, and that might be the team uh, to go after them. Iconics under a different gimmick. Yeah, yeah, I've been seeing Peyton. Oh. Uh, Peyton they've, been, they've been working out. They changed their hair color. They look different now, both of them. So they're doing something different with the Iconics. It, it's like putting breadcrumbs on Spam. You know, it might look a little different, but you bite is into that, it like, oh, this is fucking Spam. It, it's still like the Iconics. They, oh, no. Ugh. You know what? I think it was Johnny Z, or it might have been the Kyrie Sane uh, fan account. Posted mm -hmm. clips of Kyrie Sane in stardom. And I cover stardom on Wednesday shows a lot. And you look I invite anybody out there, look at some of Kyrie Sane's work in stardom. Mm -hmm. I would pay $59.99 to just see Kyrie Sane doing some of those back slaps to to, to their face. And I just want to see what Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross how they react to that. I I, I it would just look like a bad cartoon. They just they have to go such a, a step down to be on the level. Uh, it, you know, like sometimes you see people, like I said earlier, Charlotte going to NXT, she's going to help elevate some of the other women, help get them to the next level, without a doubt. With Beck, with Asuka and Kyrie Sane, instead of Alexa Bliss, Nikki Cross is fine. She's not bad. But instead of Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross being elevated to get higher on Oscar and Kyrie Sane's level, instead it's Kyrie Sane. You know, let's go down into Alexa Bliss's level. Hey, look, she's cute to look at. She's an inspiration. She's got a great story. She, you, everything you you read about her, she's a good person. You know, she's got a lot of gymnastic. You know, in her repertoire, but she misses by a mile on a lot of stuff and. I, I just, you know, I I read Nikki Cross writing this thing on Twitter that, you know, this little kid, if you would have told me that I would have grown up and been on a WrestleMania with her, you know, like, you know, like just because you dreamed it doesn't mean you should have gotten it. You know, like I dreamed that I'd be a millionaire. I dreamed that I would, you know, marry a Playboy model. I dreamed that I would have this and that. You know, just because you got an inspirational dream or even I mentioned this on last week's show with, with uh, Liv Morgan. You know, they showed this backstage clip on the network right before the Elimination Chamber where she's crying because she's about to main event a pay-per-view and all my hard work and this, this, and that. And I'm like, man, so that means WCW should have had um, fucking Judy Bagwell, a, maybe a clip a couple of months later of her crying in the locker room that I'm finally going to be able to form, perform with my son on pay-per-view. Just because you fucking cry and you dreamed of this doesn't mean that you should be in that spot right now. And again, I have nothing against them personally, but... 
I just, it's a hard sell for me to see, you know, a moment of bliss beating those two. I, if, if Oscar and Kyrie Sane would go to AEW or go to Japan, I mean, just like I said about Matt Hardy and Brody Lee, two weeks. Yeah. And people remember that listen on my Wednesday shows. I said for both of them, I said, two weeks into their AEW stints, you're going to say, how the fuck did WWE not like think they can't they can't do something like this you know yeah. oscar has gotten a record run they've had an extended tag run but right now it just feels like okay you took the belts off of your probably two most talented women in the tag team division what are you going to do now i don't right. know maybe it's to let them go back to japan and stay there for a few months because of what's going on i have no idea i didn't like well, there's the rumors match. Th there's rumors that Kari sane is leaving she might be yeah. she might be but you know it just i i was not a fan of that match yesterday it wasn't the worst match because they did work hard at times but the ending was so caca and you know the alexa bliss i invite anybody go back and watch it tell me if i'm wrong but uh next we had because i don't have notes today elias king versus king corbin Ugh. um yeah, you know, I, I predicted Elias would win. I thought there was a possibility we'd get Gronk. And by the way, I guess we didn't even mention it tonight. We glossed over it, yeah. Yeah, well, you know what? We'll talk about Gronk later when we get to the 24-7 title. But okay. I thought yeah. if Gronk was going to get involved in anything, it would be in this match because of the interaction that they had. But, um, you know, before we even get to this match, what did you think of Gronk and Mojo Rawley in the MCs for Mania. I didn't think much of it, to be honest with you. I, I don't get the whole Gronk appeal. I, I don't get it. I, I wasn't a Patriots fan, so I could give a shit about him, to be honest with you. Especially as a Jets fan, I could care less. Um, and I don't really get his appeal. I don't think he's all that charismatic. I think he's kind of Jersey Shore douchebag, in my <laughs> opinion. Seriously, he's douchebaggy. He's like that friend that we all have is... You know, we're friends with him. We accept that he's a douchebag, but sometimes we take a look at him and go, "Why am I friends with this douchebag?" Yeah. So I, I don't, I don't get it. I don't get the. He's a name, yeah, to a degree, but I think there's a lot of people who don't know who he is. Unless you're a big football fan, again, if you're a big Patriots fan, he's a big deal to you. I'm not, and he's not a big deal to me. I don't get the signing. He's not even that big of a guy. I, I, I don't get it, DT. I'll be honest with you. I don't think. I think it's going to be another Kane Velasquez, in my opinion, except with a little bit uh, more uh, media pop. By the way, for everybody that's live right now, hit the like button. I'd appreciate it if you like what you're hearing. Um, you know, look, Gronk, I said this like two weeks ago that, you know, the last time I had a vibe like this was like Vanilla Ice in the 90s. You know, I'm not saying that he has that a attitude. You know, just some people that, look, he, he is a wrestling fan. And that's why I'll always give him a little bit of that. And what I like about Gronk you remember when they were having the raw guest hosts you would have some of these guest hosts that would try to go over and beyond in the ring like mm -hmm. you know like you'd have like a guest host like have like a back and forth with a wrestler and they'd right. start ad libbing and interrupting the wrestler because they thought they could cut a better promo and they go into business for themselves gronk comes off as a guy who does not want to disrespect wrestling. And I, that's what I give to him. I think he really is, he's not there to just, you know, have fun and he doesn't give a fuck if he makes wrestling look goofy or not. Um, he does come give that opposite vibe though. Um, you know, but, you know, look, Mojo Rawley, you know, we had our truth on Monday uh, not Monday, excuse me, on uh, Saturday, because I'm thinking of Raw. He's, uh, you know, tr just he can't go anywhere with the 24-7 title. Funny thing is, he can't go anywhere now anyway because of the virus thing. But um, Mojo Rawley pins him and wins the 24-7 title on Saturday. And it was funny because Mojo Rawley said, you know, I ain't going to run out of here. And he actually just walks off. And then tonight... Sunday, even though it was both recorded at the same time, you had a few guys, you know, trying to get the 24-7 title, and Gronk does a, a, a flip 
you know, does a little dive and actually pins his close friend. I don't think they're best friends. And Gronk goes off the air as the 24-7 champion. What would you think uh, of that? <laughs> I didn't think much of it. Again, I was, what was the other guy that had the title before, Mojo, the other football player? Our um, truth No, 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 the other guy. Oh, um, oh, uh, the guy with the skinny thighs, the skinny calves. The, 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 the calves. Uh, Riddick Moss. <laughs> Riddick, Riddick Moss. Yeah, again, I, listen, I get it, the, you know, the publicity or whatever, especially now, you know, what's going on. We need someone to have a little bit of media coverage. So I get, I get to a degree, the signing of Gronk. But if he's going to be a tongue-in-cheek, funny, you know, character, the silliness, then great. Let him frolic with Mojo Raleigh and all truth and stuff. But I, obviously, I don't think he's going to be a serious wrestler in there for years. they got a lot of work to do. Um, again, I, the 24-7 title to me, I, I gave up on it a long time ago. Yeah. I, I enjoy all truth, but I find that title to be, to be nothing. Now, do you think it would be a little bit too over the top if you had, like, a wrestler with, like, one of those, you know, M95 masks on his face or whatever, like hiding his identity and, you know, like sneaks like up to Gronk and gets the 24 seven title. Uh, again, I, I really, I don't think that much. Honestly, DT, I don't really think that much of it. I thought the title kind of died down once Riddick Moss got it. Uh, I was so distracted by his calves that I couldn't. I know. I he's couldn't. Yeah, I couldn't he's, uh, he's got get too very into skinny it anyway. calves. I, as soon as you said that, I started looking at him. I felt. Yeah, weird about I it. noticed it that that night. It was <laughs> unbelievable. I mean, I invited anybody to look. His I went calves back and like, actually looked at a looked at a clip, and I was like, "Dita's right. He does have." Weird we used to talk. I like oh you God. know, like I try to hold back from being too comical about it because he might have some type of atrophy from an injury or something because that can happen. But, you know, I used to th remember when Kurt Angle, at some points in TNA, his arms look extremely small compared to other parts of his body. But Riddick Moss, man, you know, if it's not an atrophy thing, you know, work on your fucking calves, man. I, I Some people's dicks are thicker than his calves. But, uh, but getting back to uh, Elias, you know, we had that, you know, thump last week when Elias fell off of the fucking you know, the, the top stage area gets his revenge on Corbin. You know, it was a roll up. You know, it's just like, it was, you know what? I actually, I think I'm going to go back and change my mind. Instead of saying Goldberg, um, Strowman was my least favorite match. I'm going to go with Elias and, and Corbin because Goldberg and Strowman, I didn't expect anything else. Right. Um, I didn't like this match. Corbin Elias, I really thought, you know, and I, I predicted Elias, but I thought that if he was going to be injured, that maybe somebody replaces him, even if it, there was Mojo Rawley or somebody like that with Gronk in his corner. I just think I would have rather have seen someone else get the win on Corbin. But, um, you know, it was what it was, you know. Yeah. Not a big deal. But uh, next match, we had Shayna Baszler losing to Becky Lynch. Becky Lynch retains the title on Friday. You know, I, I said this for a little while, and then, you know, Becky Lynch gives that promise to that sick fan, I'm going to do my best. And Friday said, ah, shit, there it goes. You ain't going to mm. do the Babe Ruth thing, you know. I, I'll, I'll hit homers for you, and then, you know, you, you, Becky Lynch, you know, I'm going to do my best. It, it felt like a Rocky vibe. You know, Shayna Baszler felt like a Clubber Lang. Uh, who's the fucking oh. Russian? Uh, In Rocky. Um, oh, yeah, uh, Dolph uh, Lundgren. Dolph Lundgren. But what was yeah. his character? What was his name? Um, uh, 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 I'm drawing a blank right now. Jesus Christ, I can't remember his name, too. So, someone in the chat will, will save me. But that's what it felt like. It, it felt like uh, Ivan Drago. <laughs> it felt like Cos, Ivan Drago. Cos, it felt Cos, like Cos Cos Lang. That That's what it felt game. like. It felt like uh, Becky Lynch is Rocky Balboa, and Shayna Baszler was Ivan Drago or Mister T. You know, Clubber Lang, and you know, in the end, you know, the man, you know, part seven, Ivan Drago. Right. What'd you think uh, of that match, Becky versus uh, Shayna Baszler? A little disappointing. It was disappointing. Yeah, it was. It was disappointing. Um, 
I'm not sure if they were again. I'm not sure what what the mindset is right now of why certain people won and why certain people lost. Um, you know, again, the, I was surprised. That's why I'm, I didn't really do the predictions. I didn't even do Julian's prediction contest. Um, he didn't even said to me, oh, "I'm like, I, I I thought I'd get it all wrong, and I wound up getting it all wrong." Um, again, I'm I'm not sure why they went in the direction they did, but it, it didn't make a difference anyway. Again, it's you know. What, What's going to change? You know, I mean, if she, if, she, if either one of them won, it wasn't a bad match. I mean, they they work decent together. It just, I don't buy this. You know, Vince McMahon has fallen out of favor with uh, Shayna Baszler because he knew what he had in Shayna Baszler in NXT. It's not right. like she suddenly got stage fright and was mumbling and not. She did everything that she was supposed to do. I think the problem is when Shayna Baszler was in NXT, you didn't have someone who's proclaiming to be the man and being treated like the man, the king. I mean, you talk about when Jake Roberts calls Cody, you know, Caesar. My God, if Cody is Caesar, fucking Becky Lynch is fucking Mary, mother of God. Pray for our sins. Now to the end of our death, amen, or whatever it is. I mean... Shayna Baszler ran into the redheaded wall. That's why it fell flat. Nothing. Look, I, I don't blame a lot of this on Becky Lynch, but that's what happened. Shayna Baszler did what she did in NXT, but she didn't have that fucking redheaded wall in NXT, and now she's got it in the, in the main roster on the Raw roster, right. and that's where it went wrong. Um, I don't know who takes the title off of Becky. But, you know, look, it is what it is. I don't discount or I think a rematch is going to be coming between Becky and Shayna. Wouldn't surprise me if Becky loses the belt in the next, you know, month or two. Depends on what happens with shows, you know, with the virus. But her win retaining surprised a lot of people. I think in a prediction, by the way, Julian, you know, don't Take away my Drew McIntyre prediction because I said I predicted McIntyre, but I would have preferred McIntyre to win by DQ, let him get the title in front of people. I still said Drew McIntyre win, but I think I was the only person to pr predict Becky. I just had that Rocky vibe, man. You know, her doing Can't that fucking, it. you know, look, you want to wish a three year old fucking, uh, you know, serious condition in a hospital, you're going to do your best. Why does it have to be in front of a camera? The minute it was put in front of a camera, I'm like, ah, fuck. Here we go. Rocky retain. Seriously. She's Rocky Beck Beckola. Rock hey yo, Rocky. Rocky hey, yo, Apollo. I'm Becky Becky Lipola. She retained, blah, 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 blah. I think we should move on, right? Yeah, maybe Rhea Ripley will be the one to beat her. Yeah, if she goes to the main roster. I mean, yeah. I'm wondering, you know, look. I'm I'm very like I said last week. I'm curious in two weeks what happens to WWE and AEW. Um, more WWE because I don't know how much footage they got in the bag. But we're gonna see a lot of WrestleMania replay this week on on. And you know what? That's not a bad thing, as long as they play the right stuff on Raw and SmackDown. But um, you know, you you spend half the show playing replay. You know, they could have recorded four or five hours worth of additional matches over the last two weeks. And that could get them almost three, three weeks worth of content. So it's not out of the question that WWE has, I, I'm telling you, I think that six person tag match is coming. Um, I haven't really stopped to think who else. Um, the Gulak somewhere, you could tell with some of the matches the last two days that they ended up, they ended a little bit abruptly because they're probably recording another match to be played this week or next on regular TV. But next we got Sami Zayn retaining his championship, defeating Daniel Bryan. What'd you think? Uh, not that, I, it was a decent match. It was okay. Again, it wasn't all it could be. Wasn't that big on it. I, to tell you the truth, the, the other was kind of forgettable, honestly. I could have been a lot more. Yeah, I mean. Um, looks good on paper. Yeah, it looks good on, on paper. paper. Yeah. I mean, I like Sami Zayn as the IC champ. I, I, it's about I, time. I, I like him as Fidel Castro. I really. 
enjoy it. Yeah, <laughs> Fidel, he's, Fidel yeah, Castro look. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you know, he just he always reminded me of Joey Numbers. I always look at his Joey Numbers. But the green hat does look like Fidel Castro's hat. He does. I know. But uh, I, I like him as champion. You know, I've been saying this for over a week now. You know, there's, there's been reports that Daniel Bryan is going to put himself in self quarantine for 14 yeah. days. So he before he goes back to his wife and his kid, which I totally respect, and that's very good of him. As a wrestling fan, though, you might not see Daniel Bryan. You know, look, they, I'm sure last week they taped two, three more segments with Daniel Bryan before he goes into his quarantine. Right. But if, you know, if he goes into self-quarantine for 14 days for the safety of his his wife and his kid and his new unborn, you know, um, cause he doesn't want to take any chances cause he's not sick as far as we know. Right. It, it would be all null and void if he gets right back in the fucking ring. Just think you go, that's like someone going on a diet for two weeks and then after day 14 eats, you know, a dozen donuts and a bag of potato chips. Everything you just did is thrown out the window <laughs> because you're back in the ring doing this stuff. I've done that. And by the way, you know, I hope, and I'm saying this to be a little serious for a minute. I hope WWE had some coronavirus tests on hand. Thank and the you. reason why I say that is because getting back to the Randy Orton Edge match, they brawled through the entire fucking performance center. There is sweat, droplets, shit in every goddamn room in the performance center. Can you imagine if Randy Orton or Edge ends up testing positive for coronavirus? Oh, How would know. you even quarantine that? I mean, you know, like when you have bugs, sometimes you put a bomb in your in your house, like in a room, you know, like one of those bombs that lets out like the bug spray and everybody leaves for six hours or whatever. How do you sanitize the entire performance center from that? They got sweat and fucking droplets everywhere. So I'm really curious. I, I'm not saying it to be funny. I'm really curious if WWE got their hands on some coronavirus tests. Because oh, why would not. you risk your entire performance center with two guys unless you were 100% sure that they were they were clean? Well, maybe they sprayed it down or whatever. I mean, but now I heard a bunch of tigers at the Bronx Zoo have coronavirus. So you know what? I... On? there's different forms of coronavirus and I actually, you know, I don't know if I have it here, but I have a thing of Lysol and on the Lysol, it actually says coronavirus on it. I saw, yeah. I've seen that. Yeah, I've actually, seen that. I don't know if anybody could see this. Uh, I'll put this on the camera really quick. If you look at it closely, now I know it's not COVID-19, but if you look at that first line, that says human coronavirus. I don't yeah. know if anybody could see that. This is on a thing of Lysol. So coronavirus has been around for ages. I don't know if anybody could see that. It's been around for ages. It's just different forms of coronavirus. Somebody was bringing up 2005 that they predicted this. No, it was SARS is another form of coronavirus. There's, so yeah. those tigers, it doesn't mean that it's COVID-19. And the thing is, I saw that article and I saw people asking that person, do you know if it's COVID-19? And that person suddenly fucking disappeared so i don't buy that yet until i hear them say covid19 yeah because again how does my thing of lysol say human coronavirus on it just coincidentally it's not a new label i've had these for about a year or two it's just there's different forms of coronavirus but um so i'm just curious you know with the performance center that's an awful lot of sterilization but uh Anyway, Daniel Bryan, Sami Zayn, decent match. Felt like a SmackDown match than, than anything else. It um, did. It felt like it didn't feel like, again, it didn't have that big fight feel, if that's the way to describe it. It looked great on paper. They match up great. I just didn't enjoy it. I just didn't like it. Yeah. I mean, they did put on a great match. It was a great it, match. It, it just, just, I just yeah, I you, you miss that this is awesome. This yeah, is awesome. Miss, and well, yes, yes, yes. You know, this, yeah, some miss, wrestlers really feed off the crowd. And Daniel Bryan is one of them. Yeah. Exactly. And Sami Zayn yeah. as a heel also feeds off the crowd in the opposite way. 
He triggers the fans. And there's some matches. That's why even if with AEW, you look at Trent versus Kenny Omega, they had an awesome, awesome match. But without that crowd, it just something felt missing. And that's how I felt with Daniel Bryan and Sami Zayn. Um, Sami Zayn retains. I still think Sami Zayn is going to have a friendly challenge from Cesaro or Nakamura. We might even have a three-way between the three of them. I still think that's going to happen. But uh, maybe Gulak gets an opportunity. I kind of think not, but... You know, we'll see where it goes. But Daniel Bryan, I'm I'm going to be very curious to see what they do with him as far as TV if they write him off TV uh, after a week or two. Yeah. So, but not a bad match. No, um, no, no. Next, you know, no explanation for it given. Miz off of the tag team, and you could hear the commentating today. They were mm -hmm. referencing the tag team ladder match, so you could tell that was taped before they actually taped the ladder match. Um, but you know, Miz was off, so they decided it was gonna, it's gonna be a three way. I enjoyed this match tremendously. I loved the ending where all three wrestlers on the top of the ladder and they were all trying to grab the tag belts at the same time. They, it looked like all three of them were holding, you know, that metal triangular device that the belts are clipped on, but Kofi and Jimmy Uso. We're holding on to the yellow triangle, the, the holder. And we had John Morrison holding on to the belts. So they threw Morrison off the top of the ladder. He falls backwards. What a horrible way to win your match. I'm talking storyline. You fucking get laid out on a fucking ladder back first. But when he falls down into the ladder, he's got both belts in his hand. So you got Jimmy Uso and Kofi looking at each other like, what the fuck? We got a fucking yeah. empty metal holder over Case. here yeah holder yeah yeah and john morrison retains i i liked it yeah i liked it it was a fun match they worked their asses off it's it's an interesting dynamic dynamic to see ladder matches like that with no crowd i mean some of that shit you know you hear it with the crowd but even without the crowd it felt like it hurt even more i mean that, that was a pretty physical match i enjoyed it they really I tore it, it up too. They did. The three of them did a great job, um, you know, and those would be the three from those teams that yeah. should be in it. So it fell into line, DT, with Miz wouldn't have been the guy to be in that match. It was Morrison, and uh, Kofi's the guy to be in that kind of match, and Jay is the guy that got to be in that. So they had the right three guys, and, and it went well. You're right. We missed the crowd, the oohs and the ahs for those spots and falling the way they did and the spots that they took. But in the end, it was it was pretty cool, and I think it was one of the top three matches, I think, in the overall what was it 18 matches you said yes uh top three absolutely top three in my opinion. yeah i mean i you know i'll tell you the um you know when i was saying at the beginning of the show about you know you look at wrestlemania's if you get in the, you know this day and age with so many matches you get four or five really good matches you know that that's your money's worth you know you go back like i said you go back to old wrestlemania's at eight matches you would come up with two Sometimes three matches that you fall back on that you remember more than anything else. This mania, when you actually dissect it, there's a handful of matches that I wouldn't mind watching over and over again. In this three-way, the ladder match, I would say, yeah, I would have loved to have seen that over and over. I, I thought it was a great match. Yeah. What'd you think? I loved it. Like I said, I, I thought... Uh, I thought it was really good, and um, you know, again, on, on these are these are the better matches of the overall card. So again, these were these were this was the good stuff. I think honestly, DT, over, and I know we'll do the overall on the roll thing. Uh, night one was a better night when 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 talking about these matches. Night night one was better, to be honest with you. The better the matches were better. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I I enjoyed night two more than night one. Um, but you know, I really, I can't complain either as far as night one goes, you know, there was some matches that I enjoyed. This was definitely one of them. Um, next match. And I said this on Friday, I honestly thought this was going to be a sleeper hit. I thought Kevin Owens and Seth Rollins would feel a little bit more, um, better than, you know, a simple raw match. 
you know, originally the way it ended with Kevin Owens winning by DQ with Seth Rollins hitting him with the bell, you know, it was kind of a cheap way to win. I thought it was a little goofy for Kevin Owens to get on the mic and say, no, no, I ain't winning like that. You know, get back here, no DQ. It kind of felt like, all right, I actually predicted Seth Rollins because I thought, you know, Seth Rollins, you know, getting a WrestleMania win, you know, even though Kevin Owens, you know, needed the revenge. But when Owens won and then they restarted the match, I thought, oh, shit, I may actually get this right after all. Because I thought he would have made the mistake by changing it to no DQ and somehow Seth Rollins gets the upper hand, but it didn't happen that way. Kevin Owens beats the piss out of Seth Rollins. Seth Rollins got some offense too, but then Kevin Owens, he climbs the WrestleMania barrier and dives off, um, nails Seth Rollins with an elbow, puts him through the table. You know, a hell of a lot of grunting and groaning and Seth Rollins throwing the bad mouth on Kevin Owens and Kevin Owens throwing the bad mouth on Seth Rollins. This was another match that I really enjoyed as well. Very good match, I thought. And I liked Seth Rollins in this match. I liked uh, the uh, trash talking back and forth again, a lot of the ooh and ah and the pain and, you know, the uh, you know the, the physicality of it. Uh, I, I was really... I, if I, I agreed with Joey Numbers, who posted something about a month ago, if he never sees Seth Rollins again, he's good with it. And I was starting to feel the same. Um, but yet, uh, last night I felt the uh, Seth Rollins that I didn't like was there. And I liked him taunting uh, Kevin Owens, who's out on the ring and stuff. And, uh, you know, kept reminding him about Kevin's a loser at WrestleMania and Seth is a winner, which is true, uh, if you go by track record. So I, I like the trash talk, and I just, I just, uh, you know, the white alpha with the Monday Night Messiah and stuff. I like his new look. He's really embracing this Messiah thing, which I first didn't like, but now I'm starting to like it a little bit more. And they had a hell of a match. They did. And you were right. It was a sleeper match. A lot of people were saying, why are they feuding again? A lot of people forgot DT why they were even feuding. Yeah. But what was what was the beef? Uh, I remember hearing that from, from even people on tweets. Like, why are they going at it again, these two? Um, what, what are, there's no title at stake. What, what are they fighting over? You know, yeah. supremacy on Monday night. But I liked it. I thought again, back to back, the ladder match and that. That's what I'm talking about. I thought when night one, I'm like wow, you know, night one. When I look at night one, it's shaped up uh, because then we're going to talk about the match after uh, that, which even put it over the top for me. But it was a good match. They both went at it. They gave it their all, and they. Uh, I think this feud is not over, though. Unfortunately, I think they're going to continue with this for some reason. Yeah, um, just uh, chill for a second because I got a little audio issue over here. I just want to just fix this little audio issue. Just uh, hang tight for for one second. Let me let me just fix this. This will this will take two seconds. So okay. just bear with me. All right, let's let's see if uh, this is a little better, everyone. All right. Let's see if uh, this audio is a little bit better. So let's see. Tell me if this is good. All right. Hold on. Hold on. Is this better? Sounds good. Let's see if this is good. Okay, good. Yeah. All right, good. I know what I had to do. Um, Yeah, you know, look, these two guys um, have had a long feud. I didn't think the Viking Raiders were going to be there. Again, WrestleMania, Florida, it's all optional. Um, I'm just hoping this is the conclusion of the feud. I hope it's the conclusion of the feud. Um, This is a nice way for it to end. The problem is you don't have a lot of people that are in Florida right now. Now Florida with the stay at home. You know, I was talking about this last Wednesday, and I mentioned it Friday again. You know, it's going to be interesting interesting to see if WWE or AEW tries to go state jumping. And what I meant by that is is that there are some states that don't have really strict stay-at-home orders. And what's to say that WWE doesn't take a road trip to South Dakota, let's say, and find a fucking wrestling school there and rent it out for fucking a month or two. I'm not saying they're going to do that. But I'm just saying, like, you know, there's a possibility that what if um, they go to a different state and they continue going? Now, Kevin Owens is back home. 
He's back home with his family. And Kevin Owens, you know, is in Florida still. Uh, but the problem is we don't know what's going to happen, you know, two weeks from now as far as Florida goes. So I'm curious to see where this goes. But they may have to continue this feud for the simple reason that they don't have enough guys to have these two guys go their separate ways, you know? Yeah, that's true. So we'll, we'll see. But I, I enjoyed the match. Uh, next we had, <laughs> we talked about it already, Goldberg, Braun Strowman, you know, it, it is what it is. Um, you know, again, I mentioned this Friday, you know, the Goldberg experiment was a disappointment. It was a failure. It was not necessarily all his fault. You know, WWE had a different plan in mind, being in a stadium, having, you know, as I thought all along, having a fan so upset at Bray Wyatt losing that title that they'll take it out on Goldberg. So they have to yeah. cheer Roman Reigns here. But, you know, Roman Reigns pulls out. So Braun Strowman, you know, the one guy that, you know, has been there and uh, they wanted a big man, you know, to beat Goldberg. They're not going to keep Goldberg around. Braun Strowman is the champion. Three-minute match. There's really not much to add to it. It was, you know, a couple of Jack had a couple of spears and a couple of uh, power slams. That was it. That was it. You know, you know, it's really, I mean, it's just, you know, look, we're all not thrilled about Braun Strowman with what he said about the indies and GoFundMes and patrons and stuff like that. You know, this is a guy that never, I don't recall him ever working the indies himself. He and, he didn't. You, you know, he got, you know, a golden opportunity because of his size, you know, and sure, I'm sure he, at the time, he said all that dopey shit. He probably didn't expect to be in this title picture. He is right. technically a baby face. So, you know, look, majority of the WWE universe, you know, doesn't follow social media like that. The problem is there is no live crowd right now. So the fans could be angry at Strowman, and maybe they would have booed Strowman at Mania. Who knows? But they ain't no live crowd right now, so they get away with Strowman as the champion. Yeah, and if it's a means to uh, going at it with Bray Wyatt, and they could tell the story of uh, you know him bringing Braun in, and he can do the psychological head games with Braun and, and have a whole nice thing like that, I'm all for it, especially if it's going to be storytelling and they're going to need to do stuff like that uh, with – Again, uh, you know, talk about shrugging your so shoulders. No one has any idea when crowds are coming back or when they're resuming regular TV schedules. I have my own career is on hold. I have no idea. No one has any idea, DT. So, if this is just the way they can maybe do some vignettes and do some things with him and Bray trash talking and like you know psychological head games for a couple of weeks, fine with me. I mean, if that's probably what the that's maybe even what the whole plan is actually. Yeah. See, shout out to Andrew Reed. Thank you, Andrew. Um, but he also says that Braun's friend had mentioned that Braun felt really bad for his comments. My I answer to that. that is Braun had the kahunas to speak his opinion on social media. Mm -hmm. He should have this, those same kahunas to go back on social media and be man enough to not necessarily take what he said back because yeah, I'll always, yeah, I'll always respect somebody's honesty, even if it's, you know, a little distasteful or I don't agree with it, but at least if he would be man enough to just go online and say, listen, everybody, you know, I don't, I don't mean that people, you know, should not help others, but some people use that as a lazy way of getting out of, you know, doing the hard work and do it. Like if he would just go out there and say that, I think that a, a decent number of people would, you know, respect that view and give him a little bit of a reprieve on that. But instead, and this is what I say, you know, we're in a, we're in a, an age and I've been saying this for about a dozen years now. We're in an age where when something gets thrown out there online, sure, when you're a famous person, you don't want to dispel every bullshit rumor about yourself online. But when something really is out there that really is, is not helping you at all, and if anything, it's really hurting your character, person, accusation, whatever it is, a simple 30-second tweet clears it up. 
Instead, people leave stuff out there for days and weeks and months, and it builds, and it snowballs, and it builds. And again, we're in an age where, you know, you can easily fix, you know, something that you may inadvertently break. There is no reason why Braun Strowman can't just go online and... Again, not take back his comments, but at least clarify them a little more. I appreciate if one of his friends comes out and says, look, you know, he feels bad about that. But I think the people that he pissed off, especially a lot of indie wrestlers, they would probably appreciate it if the guy was man enough to say, listen, I didn't mean it like that, but I meant it more towards this. And I think that would have been a hell of a lot better. I don't understand. Why do you go silent? His fingers aren't broken. He doesn't even well, have to talk. All he's got to do is just type something. He can even f fucking call the same friend. Say, do me a favor. Go on Twitter and top up an apology. <laughs> Tell everybody I didn't mean it like that, but I meant it more about the lazy people out there, the people that have legs that can get up and actually go pump gas or work in a deli. I don't mean the people out there that really are. Not even that. Well, you know, it's funny, as we're talking here, and I was getting some emails sent to me saying, do you see what's going on with your friend Killer Cross online with Nia Jax? And I didn't know what anybody was talking about, and I scrolled over there quick. We can talk about it tomorrow, obviously, because mm -hmm. it'll more more well unfold. But Killer Cross seemed to have gotten himself in trouble defending his girlfriend, Scarlett, by answering a freaking wrestling fan question. As Killer Cross, as you know, DT, is very interactive with the fans online. But he might have made a little bit of a mistake tonight, but I don't think he did. You can go and check it out, and I'm sure you'll comment on it tomorrow on DTKC. He was defending his girlfriend, Scarlett, who someone was saying that, boy, Liv Morgan is really looking like Scarlett Boudot these days, wearing the same outfit. And Cross said something like, something, a one-word answer, like, possibly, like something like that. And Nia Jax tells him, you better sit down, dude. Like telling Cross that basically he's a developmental wrestler. Then some other do gooder comes in and tells Cross it's a bad look for a developmental wrestler to be talking shit to a major roster star. I'm like, what the fuck did he uh, say? No, no, but you got to go see it yourself. I'll, I'll look, but I don't buy a go, lot go, of go, go, go check, no, no, but go check it out. He, but Cross was doing what he normally does. He was just answering, interacting with the fans. Someone said, boy, Liv is starting to look like Scarlet. And I think Cross basically said, maybe, I don't know. And then everyone got on him about it. Like, oh, really? Like, you're, who's your girlfriend? Is nobody. Scarlett's nobody. You're nobody. Yeah, I'm like, look at, look, at this, look at this bullshit. And then Nia Jax comes on there and tells him to sit down. I'm like, what the fuck is going on here? The guy didn't even say anything. Like, oh, what a bunch of bullshit. I didn't, yeah. I, I, well, mm. you'll, you'll, we'll talk about it tomorrow. But you're just talking about clarifying something. Will, will he have to clarify his one-word answer? You know what I mean? So, like, again, it's so ridiculous, social media. It really Oh, is. yeah, I know. I agree. Um, so, after that match, we had the main event, AJ Styles versus Undertaker. And if you don't mind, you know, I'll give you the floor because yeah. I know you have a lot to say about this match, but oh, I wanted to play just a quick three-minute, four-minute clip from last week's uh, DT show. Just to yeah. basically talk about, you know, or actually, no, it was from the DTKC show of what we thought about Mania overall and what we thought about Undertaker AJ Styles. I think it's a pretty cool clip just to remind people about. And this pretty much, I think, summarized WrestleMania as a whole. Okay. I said something on Friday about WrestleMania. We'll talk about Raw first, and then I'll... Sorry, I had a little technical difficulty over there. So, all right, we got to fix now. Here we go. I said something on Friday about WrestleMania. We'll talk about Raw first, and then I'll bring up something I said Friday that people think I'm just mad and crazy uh -huh. for saying it. And I don't mean mad as in angry. I mean mad as in nuts. You're but, a madman. Uh, You're a madman. No, well, you know what? I'll say it now. I'll say it now. I honestly believe, and I'm not just saying this because 2020, although coronavirus is here, 2020 has not been a bad year for yours truly. Even March was not all that bad. Um, you know, it's it's fucked. There's a lot of fucked up. Don't get me wrong. And even here, but um, I honestly think 
WrestleMania is going to be 10 times better than we all think it's going to be. I really do. And I'm well, not just... We're going, also, we're going in with low expectations, don't you think that's the whole thing? Too? Yeah, but, <clears throat> you know, look, I I try to look at the high end of, for example, you know, when they had the broken hardies come into WWE and they were doing a little bit of uh, stuff. And then they did that spoof. Uh, well, I, I don't even think the hardies were in yet. It was the, the, the Wyatts versus the New Day. And they did... Con the reason why I'm bringing this up is because some of that was actually pretty good and some of it was average and, you know, a little corny. But WWE, you know, when you think of... And this is something I said a week ago. I said that they have to have quite a few quote-unquote gimmick matches, like street fights. And you think of AJ Styles and Undertaker. And, I, and I'm sorry for those who tuned in Friday. That sounds like a broken record. But you think of that match. You think of Cena and Bray Wyatt Funhouse match, Firefly Funhouse match. You right. think of Edge and Randy Orton having a, just a flat-out brawl. You even want to bring up Gargano Champa, Empty building, just a ring and a referee, you know, whoever, you know. So when you think of all of that, and it's all pre-taped on top of it, you know, that has the capability of really turning out something tremendous. And the reason why I say that is because you record something a week and a half early, We'll use Undertaker AJ Styles. Right. After or even halfway through the match. And I know people will not like some people will not like what I'm about to say. But at the end of the day, pro wrestling is entertainment. Doesn't matter if it's Ring of Honor or New Japan or MLW or AEW, if it's a predetermined finish, it's it's entertainment. But the thing is, is that halfway through the match, if something is botched, cut. Stop the recording, pick up the match where it left off, splice, edit, cut. After they do a spot, oh, shit, what if we did this? Oh, man, all right. So they can add, splice. I already pre am predicting. Now, they're going to do, and I brought this up Friday, they're going to do like what they did with Jeff Hardy with the, the, with the, um, the final deletion. When Jeff Hardy fell into the water and then all of a sudden he can't, <laughs> he was Willow. So you know they're going to do splice, cut, stop, record. Bray Wyatt's going to come out as the, the fiend. He's going to be not the fiend. He's gonna, you're going to see a lot of creative editing. And I know because we're wrestling fans, we always want to, we prefer to see a match genuine raw live from beginning to end without anything manipulating it you know we hate it when crowd noise gets piped in later on or camera work gets shifted but in a case like this with all of this stuff being done beforehand and being done in the environments that they're in you know they can record and edit and add this and take this out and make Undertaker look like a trillion dollars in his match. I truthfully believe some of the matches are going to be one two minutes, boom, done, bullshit. Think so? Yeah. Yeah, but I think there are at least four or five matches that I feel WWE they know the negativity that's out there. They know the pressure that they're in. Everybody that's performing is going to want to shut everybody up and show everybody that, yeah, we could still fucking knock it out of the park. I think there's going to be a four or five matches that we're going to look back on and say, that was fucking awesome. Yeah. I had myself muted because I burped. I have a confession to make. I uh, played the clip so I could run inside and take a leak and get something to drink. Oh, there you go. I was going to try to get away with it, but uh, I um, 
I knew I was good when I held the drink up. People would be like, oh, he trained, changed drinks over here. But uh, no, I had to mute it for a second because I burped before. And I didn't want to even hear my burp. But no, look, um, AJ Styles versus Undertaker. You know, we, we thought that they were going to make Undertaker look like a, a million dollars. And online, they talked about today how it took eight hours to film what they filmed. Unfortunately, there are some websites that have a lot of behind-the-scenes photos with Undertaker hanging out with AJ at the complex. And I don't know if you've seen any of those photos. Nah, There's a see. lot of behind-the-scenes photos online already, which for me as a wrestling fan, I don't need to see that. You know, I but, don't want to see that. Plus, he killed the AJ in the end, so that's <laughs> kind of fucked up. AJ's dead. So I don't yeah. know what everybody's talking about. Um, but I tell you, you know... Uh, the match was excellent. It reminded me of, you know, other things in the past, the final deletion, Lucha Underground, you know. So boiler, the, bo below Boiler Room Brawl? Yeah, Boiler Room Brawl. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, again, if, you, if people were upset at some of the over-the-top special effects with Bray Wyatt and Cena, like I brought up before, Undertaker's laid out in, in the, the grave, and then all of a sudden, he's behind AJ Styles. Was his fucking Michael Myers? You know, is it, you know what I mean? Like, I understand. The, the only part of last night that I did not like, and this might be the only reason, because, see, the thing is this. With Cena and Wyatt, as I watched it, there was never a part during that entire segment where right. I said, ah, this kind of sucks so stupid. You know what I mean? Like, I, I didn't have one part during Cena and Wyatt tonight that I felt that way. But I did have that yesterday when there was like 95 druids surrounded by Undertaker. And, you know, look, I, I remember when Austin would beat up like five members of DX and, you know, everybody's waiting in the corner and then each person individually like tries to confront them and gets laid out with one punch. Doing it with, a, with a, an older Undertaker is a hard sell. And what the fuck happened to the druids? You know, if they're going to use special effects like that, they should have just had them, like, vanish in the air or turn into dust. Like that shit on, online where everybody uses that special effects where somebody just turns into, like, dust and drifts away. Where did all the druids go? They ran into the woods? You know, so there was a couple of things that I, eh. But, you know, overall, though, I mean, the only thing I disagree with what you said yesterday is the only reason why I don't call it like a match of the year candidate because it really wasn't a match. It was just like a flat out brawl. But it was, it, put it this way, if I say Wyatt and Cena was my favorite match of Mania, Undertaker AJ was my second favorite. I'm not dogging on it all. It was phenomenal, pun intended. Yeah. It made Undertaker look like a million dollars. AJ Styles played his role perfectly. Excellent. Yeah. I kind of wish they would have came out with the original American Badass theme. They went with Metallica instead. But seeing Undertaker back as American Badass was awesome. Because somebody earlier today posted a photo of Undertaker around 2000, I don't know, five-ish maybe. Mm -hmm. When he was American Badass, maybe even a couple of years before that. And 2003. Yeah, 2003. And him now, a little more in the face, but almost mirror images of each other. And I even think he wore the same bandana for this yeah. that he wore in 03. Yeah. So wh what was your overall as far as the match? What really did it for you that just made it so them. awesome? Probably the most consecutive posts of uh, props of something I've given to the WWE since I've been on Twitter. Um, that's how much I liked it. And I was happy to do it because Lord knows I goof on them at, you know, their expense. I make fun of them as much as anybody else uh, from reactions to crowds, to angles, to show ratings. I've given them such a hard time as a lot of people have. So I was happy to give them some props. So I was like, you know what, let me go over the top now with praising them because I go over the top with shitting on them. So let, let me be fair. And, uh, and I loved it. I'm a huge Undertaker fan anyway. I mean, I got a Ministry of Darkness tattoo on the back of my forearm. So, I mean, which I got in 97. So, I mean, and AJ, man, and I used to, remember DT, I used to not like AJ Styles. I thought he was overrated. 
Uh, I thought he was a TNA lifer. I thought he was never going to go to the big dance, and then he did, and he showed up here, and he proved proved he belongs here, and he's going to retire with the WWE, and he's been a great asset since he's been here. And he played the the heel perfectly. I mean, he really did, because you look at them, and you're like, wow, Undertaker's about eight inches taller, got about 75 pounds on him. Eh. You know, you don't really buy it. AJ is, is not a tough guy. But AJ but, used uh, weapons, you know, which made it good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But AJ's not like a tough guy or anything that would take on Taker, you know, but he's not like an Arn Anderson or anything like that. So you kind of like kind of suspend this belief a little bit. So AJ's not a tough guy. Uh, you know, when you take on Undertaker, you got to have a little badass in you. Um, but AJ played the run. Of course, he's got his henchmen there. Gallows and Anderson did their thing. But they just meshed really well together. Something that I didn't think was going to work worked beautifully. And I don't know if it's Jeremy Borash who helped with Final Deletion. There's rumors that he helped with this. Um, I, if he did, great. Whoever was with production, the atmosphere, the Metallica song. I would have liked if they used the Kid Rock American Badass song, but I think Metallica. Well, I meant Lipinski the, the, when he when he did oh, that. Lip, one. Oh, 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 Roland. 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 Yeah, yeah. But the original one was was the American. But he used Roland and the American Badass, and then he had that generic music for Big Evil. Um, I think Undertaker looked great, you know, for 50. You're going to pay, I think it was. You're yeah, gonna yeah, you're going to pay. pay. You're gonna yeah. Pay. He's 50. Yeah, I think, yeah. as, can someone look it up? Has Undertaker just turned 55? His birthday is either in March or April, or he turned 55. Um, he looked great, and AJ played his role as the shit heel really good. And I tell you, when uh, some of those, and I know they worked on it, and there were cuts and edits and stuff, obviously, but they pieced it all together beautifully. Yeah. And the atmosphere was fantastic. And I don't know where that was. It was makeshift graves or whatever, but it looked really good. And I liked uh, the part where he uh, obviously uh, came down from the steps and he threw AJ down. And the way he was even talking to him, it, it was, you know, it was just like, what's my wife's name? Tell me I'm old again. Yeah. How old am I again? I just loved, I loved it. And AJ was like, please, please, I'm sorry. Don't bury me. It was just like he was gurgling like he was, what, it was like those, it was fantastic, man. I just love the acting. What was awesome thing, about that is, and this is something you don't get in wrestling that often. Everything that Undertaker said and everything that AJ Styles said during that entire match is the same things that you, me, and everybody else watching and listening would say if they got into that same fight with a person under the same atmosphere. Some guy makes fun of my wife, calls me an old man, and this, this, and that. Say I'm old. Come on, say I'm old. What's my wife's name again? You know, and come here, come here, Alan. You know, what's my wife? Like, it, everything, the suspension of disbelief, everything that was said didn't sound gimmicky, didn't sound catch like a catchphrase, didn't sound like somebody wrote it for them. Like, it felt like a lot of ad lib. And, right. you know, under, I had so many flashbacks of Undertaker as American Badass when he used to be in the back. And you, you, even, like, I always go to his match with Jeff Hardy. You know, yes, and it felt yes. like that too, because when he picked up a AJ and it was like, come here, come here, you know, and he's like giving him a little like Pat, like it felt a lot of when Jeff Hardy said, I, I'm not, I, I'm, I'm still standing or I'm getting up. And it was, it was real trash talk. Yeah. Benjamin, you, you, you said, you said it perfectly. It, it really was, was excellent. I mean, again, you know, the, and I want to make this point i want to just make myself clear i in no way am criticizing this match the druid thing was a little corny but 98 yeah. percent of it i loved and i the only reason why i found myself entertained more about cena and wyatt is because there was so much more creativity put in as far as going back to his uh, when he first started doing the thugonomics doing the skits nwo with the puppets and vince and the cyanite's main event and all it was just like whoever thought of that it was just like wacky over the top this felt like two guys beating the fuck out of each other in a cemetery and that's not a bad thing it's just two totally different animals that you can't compare them I'm not trying to compare them. No, they're different. I I tell you, man, after watching that last night, 
there's a couple of things that I that I come to this conclusion. Number one, everybody out there that is saying, oh, you know, if even if crowds come back, would you like WrestleMania across two nights? Number one, that ain't fucking going to happen. Because number one, just imagine that stadium having to clean up be, uh, it, that soon because the next morning you have to fill it up again. I know what people are going to say, like baseball games and stuff. It's not the same animal. You're not going to, it's going to be r- almost impossible to have two nights in a row in a same stadium like that. It's, it's very, very difficult. But as far as Undertaker goes, my immediate thinking is, man, you know, I talked about Goldberg coming back against Dolph Ziggler, righting the wrong. I talked about, you know, Undertaker righting the wrong. Like all of the last couple of years, all of the matches that Undertaker had a less than stellar performance, how do you get better than what you did yesterday? So is this the new norm for pay-per-views, not every month, but one or two times a year or WrestleMania that you get one of these matches that is heavily produced, edited, pre-recorded, you know, something just way over the top. Is this going to be an annual thing? And do you have Undertaker come back in another graveyard match a year from now? I almost feel like and this is the thing I think people need to understand. They edited. This took eight hours. So, yes. you know, Undertaker could have done two moves and then had to sit down. I'm not saying that he's an invalid, but I'm just saying, like, you know, that cannot be done live. That was done over an extended period of time. There was, just like I said with that clip, that's why I played that pre-recorded clip of, of our show last week. They edit, they cut, they add, they take away, they splice, they do this. They make them like a trillion dollars, and that's what they did. They succeeded. The question is, what do you do with Undertaker in the future? Because he cannot do that on a live match. Would you want Undertaker to go out like this, riding away on the motorcycle, his career is done, and he leaves that fucking high? I mean, this is like if Undertaker was going to retire and be done, this almost feels like you can't get any better than this. Why would you want someone to retire, like a baseball player, why would you want someone to retire who's batting 165? You know what I mean? Like, I don't think he could go out any better than this. Then the opposite side says, oh, it was so awesome. We could manipulate that and do it again a year from now. What do you think? No, I think, and again, matter of fact, after we're done in the next couple of minutes here, I'm going to go and watch the uh, Undertaker documentary series tonight that starts tonight uh, about, uh, you know, his, uh, you know, modern documentary of what's going on with him now. Um, And there's a lot of wrestlers talking about, uh, you know, really knowing if it's time to retire Shawn Michaels on it, Steve Austin. Uh, I think this would have been perfect. And actually, the way he rode off and put his arm up, and then the taker said the old school taker symbol came up from when back in the day. Uh, I, that was almost like a calling card of this should be it and ride off into the sunset. That's how I took it. And if they listen, there's nothing official on it. We can all make what we want out of it. But that's a great way to go out. I agree with you, DT. Nothing better. He beat a modern star. He didn't beat some throwback guy. It wasn't Sting, another 60 year old. And um, by the way, Undertaker turned 55 on March 24th. Um, and thanks, Chris. Uh, again, I think it was the best way to, to, to roll it out. Now, everyone would say, well, you know, let him take a year off like he normally does, and we'll see him next year. But for what? And, and to uh, face who? And who's oh, Alistair Black? Oh, come on. I, again, staying Alistair Black. Everyone has the opponents lined up, by the way, as we're talking, DT. People are writing opponents. But, uh, again, I think this is the Roman Reigns thing. He put the... Um, Jacket down the hat. That was a few years ago. We thought that that was it for him. Then he came back, and that's already three years ago. That was the that character. Now, as the American badass, and which is closer to what Mark Calloway really is in real life, which is more this this guy. Um, I think this is the perfect way to end it and beating AJ Styles. It's a good way to go out again. Yeah. A modern top star. AJ's 
you know, in his forties, he's not a young buck, you know, but he's uh, no pun intended. He's, uh, this is a good way to go out. I, I don't know why he has to, or even people are like, wow, I wonder wh- who's going to fight next year. Does he have to fight somebody next year? I think DT, they're just putting him now as a special attraction and that he is just a, a special guy and that undertaker is undertaker. He's does Jim Ross even called the Babe Ruth of wrestling. And, and he's just a rarity and you can't, put him in the even a he's he's above jericho he's above aj styles he's above kurt angle he, these are guys not on undertake undertaker's in a category by himself has his own wing in the hall of fame when he goes in the hall of fame i agree but there has to be a time and i think they talk about it tonight on the dock where austin even talks about it where you know mark needs to know for himself when it's time to stop and maybe it is time to stop and i think that's what they talk about tonight on this part of the documentary of and michelle talking about her wanting him to stop but he's got to do it for himself so i wonder that's a big thing on tonight's documentary we can talk about it tomorrow but i think the way it closed out is the perfect way raising his arm in the air the old school taker symbol came on with the crosses and the two things which i haven't seen in a long time from him and uh right off into the sunset like you said it closes out wrestlemania one it's a special WrestleMania because of conditions, and it was technically the main event. So, again, what more do you need? Does he have to say, this is my last match? Does it always have to be like that? There's ball players like, you know, DT, who don't have a last game or whatever. They just retire, and then they go to the Hall of Fame, and they have their ceremony. I don't know why everyone expects. No, no, no. Undertaker has to say that it's a <laughs> oh, I know match. why. Because yeah. they see the finished product, which was the main event of night one. They don't see the eight hours that went into it. And if you watched, if somebody had footage of the whole eight hours of doing this, and if Undertaker's not moving around all that well, and they have to keep, you know, I'm not saying they're doing that, but the point is, uh, this documentary, I think the timing is deliberate. And I said a couple of years ago, I even think you might remember this like five, six years ago, I said, little by little, WWE's going to start domesticating The Undertaker. They start humanizing him. That's what I said. They're going to humanize The Undertaker. And the more they're incorporating his marriage, his outside, talking about tigers and all this others, you know, now airing this documentary right after, you know, we see the finished product and we see the 20, 25 minutes, whatever it was last night, and we're like, come on, man, look at how he fucking, what he did. He he could fucking do this again. Let him do it against Sting. He could fucking beat someone again. But again, when you see that the eight hours that put into that, you know, physically, it may not be what you think it is. And my point is, is that are you only going to get a good version of Undertaker when you have to use tons of editing and special effects and pre-recorded. And if that is acceptable, you know why I have no problem with it? Because we still see fucking Schwarzenegger and Stallone and all the others going into their fucking 70s and they're still doing superhero films. So why can't Undertaker do a pre-recorded you know, film? Because that's really what it felt like. It was a film. Yeah. The thing is, though, is that you can't look at yesterday and think, Undertaker still got it because I guarantee you, you know, you take a whole bunch of pieces and glue them together and splice it and edit in this snack. That's why I said last week, and again, that's why I played the clip. They were going to make Undertaker, he was going to look like a trillion dollars. And um, Andrew Reed says he heard Undertaker say he, he still keeps coming back because Vince keeps asking him to come back and he does us a favor. I, I absolutely agree. Um, and yeah, the Saudi money, without a doubt, absolutely. Um, I personally think Undertaker is not done. I someone had, had said earlier that oh, Undertaker should you know he's got to go out in front of a live crowd. When is Undertaker that interactive with a crowd? You know, I don't picture him soaking in the cheers. You know what I mean? Um, I just think. If I take my wrestling fandom hood, being a wrestling fan, if I put that aside and I just look at it as the Undertaker character, last night, I don't think you can go out any better. I yeah. mean, it's, I don't think you go out any better. If he was to retire, it's interesting. I wonder how many of us would have thought, 
you know, Undertaker's last opponent before he retires is AJ Styles. I don't think any of us would have thought that. Probably would have thought Kane or somebody else. But I tell you, man, if we found out that he was retiring and this was it, what a fucking way to go out. But again, I still think he's got more. Um, but what a way to go out. Yeah, I loved it. And again, I watched it three times and then I watched the edge. I was watching, I was really into the, the whole WrestleMania weekend mode. I mean, I'm trying to get away from all this bad news and doom and gloom. I said it today. It's nothing wrong with an escapism. Uh, and I think a lot of wrestling fans are trying to embrace that too. Uh, so I, I, when it's all said and done, DT, you think um, it was uh, highly watched uh, WrestleMania weekend? You think a lot of the fans uh, um, did, did, well, did tune in? Well, I definitely think that they did. They got a surge of fans that did not originally tune in to night one that decided to get it because of what they heard about Undertaker, AJ Styles. I'm thinking that too, yeah, I'm thinking that. By the way, AJ Styles is not dead be for everybody that's saying that because <laughs> his, hand, his hand was out of the coffin. People need to remember. He's not dead. Uh, does anybody remember, what was it, 1997? Was that the Buried Alive match? Undertaker with his hand outside the, the coffin uh, yeah. or the dirt? So mm -hmm. AJ Styles did the very same thing. He's not dead. He's not dead. Okay. He'll take some time off, but he's not yeah. dead. Um, but and I'm talking storyline. Uh, it would be interesting if AJ Styles' character was done, but uh, it's not. But yeah. I think a lot of fans, look, the ratings have not been all that great. Leading into WrestleMania, they haven't been all that great. I think a lot of people just weren't feeling mania. And I think once they heard about AJ Styles Undertaker and they have seen a lot of people say, you know what? Undertaker AJ Styles just totally made night one worth watching. I think people said, and WWE, you got to give them credit about this. They really rolled the dice because the money match on Monday was that only match. You look at the other matches, you know, it, it it felt more like Monday Night Raw or SmackDown matches. They kept Edge uh, Orton for night two. They kept Cena and Bray Wyatt night two. They kept McIntyre and Lesnar night two. They kept Rhea Ripley and Charlotte night two. You yeah. know, they kept some pretty damn good matches for night two. Um, not taken away from night one, but, you know, I think... They, f they figured that this AJ Undertaker match was such a masterpiece because they had this recorded for a week. So they realized we got some masterpiece here that we sh there's going to be so much buzz. Even Stephanie wrote a comment on social media today praising them, which I thought was a little bit fucked up because you, it would have been nice if she would have named everybody on Mania by name, but she went out of her way for that. Um, so I think WWE realized what they had in what they recorded and they knew that the buzz, once that went out there, that a lot of people were going to order that didn't originally order night one. So I think it will the buy rate be what it has been in years past. No, not even close, maybe half to two thirds at the most, but they definitely, it, they definitely didn't get like an abysmal number. No way. No way. I, so. I honestly think Mania was a lot better. And and I've been saying it for weeks. I wasn't trying to troll people online when I said what I said yesterday. I have been saying for weeks that I honestly thought WrestleMania was going to be a hell of a lot better than people were painting online. And some people, it almost felt like they were hoping WrestleMania to suck. You know, to almost like justify all the bitching and complaining for weeks and yeah. weeks and weeks leading up to it. I still I feel that the wrestlers are not bigger than all of us. If everybody watching this right now are forced to stay at home, if baseball players and basketball players and football players, they can't even have a pick-me-up game in a park to entertain fans because of what's going on. Rest wrestlers should not, and it's not an insult to them, but they should not feel that they have more that they're bigger than a virus and i think that's why stephanie and wwe refuse to call it by that name because they feel that they are 
more powerful than the virus, that they have more authority than all of us. They are not essential employees. I'm not trying to say that to be an asshole, but they're not. They're entertainers. No. Movie companies, athletes, they're all forced to stay at home even though they don't want to. What makes wrestling they, different? They talked about Vince had a, um, a call with uh, Donald Trump today. Yeah, yesterday. Yeah. Yeah, yesterday. I'm sorry. Yeah, he talking. was on a conference call with all, all, the owners of all other sports, and they were talking about the hope of having games by August. Would've, that's would've that's done. that's the plan. That's why you had these geek websites yesterday night saying no live wrestling until August? Question mark. They were they heard about the Trump meeting and Trump talking to the owners of football and baseball and everywhere, including Vince, and they were saying that they hope that they can have live crowds assemble again for sports by August. Yeah. So that's that's where the August thing came in, for those that don't know. But at the end of the day, you know, and I thank you very much, Elena. I, I am a wrestling fan. I am a selfish wrestling fan. I absolutely loved this weekend. It wasn't as good as WrestleMania is from years past. But I look at it like this. Superstorm Sandy, they leveled... It leveled my parents' house. They had no electricity for three months. My yeah. father never left the house. My mother lived with me for three months. My father locked himself in a in a bathroom every night with a shotgun and because he, he lost it. And he protected his house, refused to let it get knocked down. Everybody, a lot of people know the story already. And there's a point I'm no. getting at. But I, I wasn't bring, playing on bringing this up. But he refused to let the state knock his house down and he luckily got a couple of strings pulled and they gave him a chance to level the house, straighten it back up. And he did, and he rebuilt it. And you know, he's still there today, but for three months, my father ate those M M R E meals and yeah. stuff like that. And I remember my going to see my father and having these like Navy M R E stuff. And, you know, I ended up buying some of them from eBay and Dells, when Dells was still doing the YouTube stuff with me, he could t tell you, he would see on my search history me watching MR people eating MREs 20, 30, 40 years ago. My point is this. When you go camping in the mountains or you're living in your house with no electricity and everything around you is all fucked up and you heat up a, a Navy packet in boiling water of lasagna and you open that son of a bitch up, it tastes like the greatest fucking thing that you've eaten in years. So under the circumstances, you try to make the best. It's the saying I always say, you try to take chicken shit and turn it into chicken salad. So right. pro wrestling, we weren't having live crowds. They were insistent on having it. The wrestlers were going to go balls out under the circumstances. So you, I can't compare this mania to years past because it's not the same. It's like being in a house with no electricity or running water for a couple of months. And then you get a, you know, you get your first ice cold soda, you know, and you just yeah. guzzle it and it could be outdated. It could have no carbonation, but it just something about you like, oh my God, this is the greatest thing I've had. You know, that's how you have to look yeah. at this weekend. You know, I think some people just way overanalyzed it, doom and gloom. And I kept telling people out there, just stay away from those people as much as possible on social media because all they're going to do is bring you down and try to convince you, you know, that this is going to suck. And then yeah. when it doesn't suck, and this is the most amazing thing about everything that I just said, those same people that fed you doom and gloom for weeks and weeks and weeks, those are the ones that couldn't shut their fucking mouths yesterday or today. Those are the ones that fucking podcasted for eight hours telling everybody how incredible and awesome it is and that. These are the same people that insisted for the last couple of weeks or month that this was going to be doom and gloom and cancel it, shut it down, WWE's done, they're not going to recover. And all. These are the same people now that can't shut the fuck up about this. So... You know, I, that's why I don't have many friends online because some people <laughs> think, yeah, some people think I'm taking shots at this part. I'm just talking about the overall social media. You know, I wrote tonight, I saw regular fans just expressing that they like a match, Charlotte winning the title. Yeah. And I see these podcasters saying, 
you don't know shit about wrestling. Just because you like a match, they don't. You don't know fucking a thing about wrestling. Because you dislike a match that they like, you don't know a fucking thing about wrestling. And then what happens? A couple of hours later, you get the bipolar tweet. Everyone, at the end of the day, we're all wrestling fans. We should all get along. That's why I just, I, I don't try to be antisocial, but I try to look at things with the glass half full that it's going to be better than what people are saying. And usually it is. It's usually better. Yeah. And you look back at this mania, and again, I think there's four or five matches that you look back and you say, man, I could watch that shit over and over again. Yeah, I mean, I agree with you. Uh, I, and I agree with the whole narrative. And I and I saw that too. They're never going to recover. This is it. This is the literally the, the proverbial nail in the coffin. For the, and I'm like, no, it's not. And plus, again, it's not anybody's fault what's going on in society. We're all shut down. It's not, I don't want to sit home tomorrow and, you know, look, I'm catching up on my wrestling. I'll be a hell of a lot better podcaster because I'm putting more time into my shows, into Castle Chronicles, KNT. I'm going to have a big, great show this Tuesday uh, with Trez. But, yeah, but I wish I was working. I wish I, I, I don't want to be out of work. A lot of people, wrestling doesn't want to not play the crowds. People don't want to be uh, where they're at right now. We have no fucking choice. So embrace wrestling. At least wrestling is doing something to, uh, you know, giving you new content. They to taped a bunch of stuff. Just enjoy it. Embrace it. Ride this wave out, and it'll get better. And if you don't think it's going to get better, then jump off the ship already yeah. and shut the fuck up. Seriously. Shout, well, shout out King 13 uh live right now all the way in frankfurt germany so oh, nice. okay. i hope everything's okay over there yeah I, I keep hearing things uh you know across the globe with this virus man see That's what happens so i'm gonna keep the faith and hope by the end of the month i i unfortunately i was supposed to be at a wedding yesterday next week was supposed to be my engagement dinner week after i was supposed to go away so it's that's postponed, all yeah. postponed. So, right, we rescheduled it for the end of May. Hopefully, by then, things will be much better than what it is now. But uh, okay, that's pretty much it. So, yeah, well, yeah we went well beyond what we wanted. Yeah, but well, again, we ended like up said, covering yeah. both nights, and we wanted to give it its due. I mean, tomorrow is the DTKC show. You know, I, I will prepare everybody now, not trying to be a Debbie Downer or anything like that, but be prepared. A lot of what you see tomorrow in Raw is going to be a recap of WrestleMania, which is fine. Um, you put that aside, you know, there won't be that much for us to cover tomorrow. So well, we tomorrow will cross, probably be a quick... The cross story. We can cover the yeah, cross. yeah, I'm going to look into that yeah, and look, see, look into it, you know, what I think about that. You know, I've seen so much, you know, social media garbage that's just to play up... You know, I don't believe every every feud I see on social media within staff. You know, just randomly Nia Jax coming out of nowhere. I got to look at it. I'll look at it. Yeah, and I'll check it out. Yeah. Definitely talk about it tomorrow. But uh, you know, I think look, I tell you, man, WWE. If they were smart, you they definitely need to show some of Undertaker AJ Styles tomorrow night. Yes, that would be very smart, actually. Yeah, they definitely need to. Um, what What do they lose, DT, by showing that match tomorrow night? On uh, is there? There's nothing to lose, like Jordan monetarily, is. right? Is Jordan there really? Is. They you could still buy the pay per view on uh, the the Fox outlet. You know, they, oh, they okay. were streaming Fight TV. I think you could still buy it. I um, WWE Network. They want people to subscribe. Sure, it's free the first month, but you know, it's it. It's like when we used to buy stuff on pay per view, and you didn't yeah. have the network. They would show like still shots, and sometimes we would get five seconds of video, or would pause right before a move, and that yeah. was to get you to buy the replay. So, um, I'm thinking that you know that uh, I I'd be shocked to shit if they aired the whole match tomorrow. But DT, would, couldn't they off? Couldn't they offset that by saying we're going to show you what everybody's been talking about? And won't they get advertisers? Um, at the end of the day, WWE is a business, and if they yeah. can get people to buy the replay or subscribe to watch the full match, I can't see them the night after showing the full match in its entirety. We may just to see pop a rating, you know, just to get the ratings back up a little bit. You know what I mean? 
Yeah, I I think we'll we will probably see some still shots or maybe a clip, but I don't think they showed a full match. I think we may get maybe Kevin Owens versus Seth Rollins. That match may air re, as a repeat, but it's gonna look. I think tomorrow is gonna feel like a, a like some old school WWF where yeah. we would see like uh, WrestleMania and then we would tune into superstars and you have Mean Gene Oakland just giving us a recap of each match with maybe a still shot here and there and an interview of the person after the match was was over. We may get stuff like that. Um, and I still think we may get, I don't know, it just felt like the, the Street Profits with Garza and Theory today, the way that ended, it just felt like, all right, they immediately taped a six-person into gender match right after that. That's what it felt like. So would yeah. not be surprised if we get something like that. And then we'll, well, we'll find out if anybody else is coming to the main roster. Yeah, I mean, so you'll be able to watch the uh, Edge and Undertaker tomorrow. I'll watch it tonight, so maybe we can review it tomorrow for everybody. Yeah, I'm going to, you know, I'm, I mean, right now it's 10 after 1, and I have to no, work no, tomorrow I know, morning, I know. Oh, yeah, but... When You're I get essential. home from work tomorrow, uh, I should have some time to to watch both. I'm going to watch the Edge one for sure. I'll t uh, maybe I'll watch Taker tonight before I crash. Okay, and we'll talk about it tomorrow to, to fill some time on DTK. Yeah. All okay. right. Sounds good. So I will Thanks, talk DT. to you tomorrow night. We'll do. Everybody have a good night. Thanks for sticking with us on YouTube and Discord, and we'll catch you tomorrow. Yes. Yeah. All right, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this episode, and uh, again, we'll be live tomorrow. Uh, 11.05 p.m. I know we were doing 11.15, but since WWE is going off the air right now at exactly 11 o'clock, there's no reason why to make you wait 15 minutes. So Monday night, 11.05 p.m. Uh, once again, um, if you like tonight's recap on the way out, doesn't cost anything, just hit the like button because that gets us a little bit more visibility gets this channel a little bit more exposure online and appreciate it. And uh, that's pretty much it. So I want to thank everybody for taking the time to tune in tonight. Much appreciated. Much love as always. And uh, don't forget, Monday night, DTKC show. Wednesday will be Wednesday Night Dynamite. And I will tell everybody now, uh, Don Tony show will return again this Friday. Um, it's weird. The Friday show for some reason, seems to be getting like the most people tuning in. I'm not saying the other shows don't, but Friday, I, it's just for some reason with Friday night, is just an extra boost of people, especially live. So since so many of you want to tune in, I will make room Friday night to be here as well. So right after SmackDown Friday night, I will be here and should be a fun week. Definitely want your feedback. Follow me on Twitter at Don Tony D. And look, if you're not a subscriber to this channel right now, hit the subscribe button on the way out. I was originally going to go retro today. I had my red Brodus Clay sweatsuit from the 80s all ready to go. The only reason why I didn't wear it is because it is hot in here right now. If you watched the video, you saw me wipe you know, my forehead a few times with this thing. And um, for some reason, it's like 90 degrees in here tonight. And it, I don't have a fever. I don't have coronavirus. But um, that sweatsuit is all nylon. Nylon. Wear a nylon sweat, sweat jacket for five minutes. I would have sweat. More, if you saw Tamina's sweat tonight, my face would have been 10 times more sweaty than Tamina. And Mish, before I go, Mish, I posed this earlier. When was the last time that we saw any skin on Tamina other than her face and her hands. Was it 2008 or two? Is it been that long? I honestly, I look at Tamina's Facebook, Instagram, social media, Google image search. I can't find her wearing like shorts in a park or doing like a workout video. Like she's just dressed in full clothes all the time. I don't have a Kango hat, but, um, Chris, I might actually buy one just for the fuck of it. Just, uh, I used to have one. I used to have one of those pancake Italian hats, too. I went through about a two-year phase when I was in my early 20s where I would wear the pancake hat. If anybody remembers the movie The Godfather when they wore those flat Italian pancake hats, I used to have one. And uh, I might buy one just for the fuck of it. So, but, all right. 
it would be a little disrespectful of me to be to stay on here since my co-host is not. I want to thank you all for tuning in. I want to thank once again Shaheen over at Nuclear Graphics for making this wonderful artwork for me. Uh, much appreciated as always. Does a great job, and you can catch him on Twitter at Nuclear Heat Graphics because he does some phenomenal artwork. So I am out of here, everyone. Be well. Enjoy Monday Night Raw, and I'll catch you all again after Raw. Ciao, everybody. Son, oh my. It was fun to channel surf. It was kind of hard to do a little pocket pool after you hit the last channel button 50 times for two hours plus. Son, oh my. And his whole idea of overanalyzing, oh, he's an alcoholic, and he misplaced the belt. And how could you have someone champion like that? Get the fuck out of here. Wednesday night. Don, oh my. You can have fun. You really are. <laughs>